Yeah, that's that new mac and cheese, man. Detroit flow. Featuring Ice Weird Bezel. Lil Yachty. Yeah, it's going down. Mac and cheese. Rappers acting like they pay, we know that he broke Saying he the hottest in the city, it must be jokes Who verse me like Clarence and be rap, you know he choke I got my own bitch, but I know for sure I make yours deep throat For the pandemic, he wasn't nobody, was a lame Actually rapper, they know chatter, he been paid Told a broke job more, cause he love digging grave He don't know his role, ain't a hustler, shooting, he in the way One wrong move, and he got subs out the game He acting tough like he was that dude, they hit his brain All these niggas act, it's all that cap, got y'all in the tank Don't do no dissing in these tracks, we won't speak on what's his name a lot of sticks up in the crib, we don't need alarms And we know that boy pussy, he don't mean no harm I ain't gotta move, I drop a bag, he won't see tomorrow And your bitch want me sliding in it like a VCR I keep a tool like Bob Told my mama 15, I don't need no job All this ice keep me cold when it's hot And she gon' suck the dick until I tell her stop How this niggas in the city, yeah, they show us love Yeah, we slime with them glizzies and them tennis trucks You the type to eat the pussy and don't never fuck And I'm the type to fuck off a perk, don't never bust Do the dash, drive the foreign like it's stolen Way before I had this ice, they knew I was the coldest Don't you ever put no gun out here and really try and blow it And don't ask me about no niggas, I don't be with, I don't know them Bitch, you trapping peas. Hella mud, I could pull a big act for weeks. Get them whack for the cheap, by the rack of peace. Heavy ice diamonds full of water like mac and cheese. Snuck the 40 in this bitch, drop your hype, man. I caught a million, y'all hundreds in my nightstand. We came up with some dog in the white hand. Running around drum on the drinker like a mic stand. Bitch, I'm a real demon. Fuck a nigga, baby, mom, when the kids leave. Drunk ate the other day and I'm still lean. Little nigga, cause he killed people. Went to the hood for the purse, I got bored with me. Shoot a goofy in his chest, took a shoulder with me. Had a one man and diamond, ain't no code of fitting. Got a million dollars worth of cheese, like Low and Gillis. Bitch. I don't like niggas. I work 30 some men. I don't fight niggas. Bro, just tattoo his face like he bite niggas. Just might pop his shin. They just hype niggas. Go, man. Spent on jury. I'm so icy. I can't trust no bitch cause they pull shite stick. Off the X, trying to get top. Now she act nice. Down down a wig. Now she act feisty. My bad if you won't get back. Give him an ultimatum. Bro, niggas. Then the channel hate him. I heard what you said. Three of bitch. You made him. Don't want smoke. I still am late. I raised up. Monster Jam. Yeah, put that bitch in the headlock like this. They try bro on court, like it has 600 grams for the cops. Fuck the cops. Hops, they know, know we him. It's us. It's us. Okay. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Text Let's go. Listen, man, this is exclusive right here, man. Uh-oh. We got my man, the one and only man, Uh-oh. Podcast King. You know Uh-oh. what I mean? Listen, this, listen, if you don't know, this is the real stories from the cell. Listen, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, nigga. This story is from the cell. Let me just tell you something. Let me tell you something. Before you introduce a nigga, let me just tell you something. You so excited that we got this nigga on here. You done fucked the whole introduction up, nigga. You're now tuned into million dollars worth of game. Nigga, it's a special edition. This is that ass nigga tax. We got the one and only tax stone. This your fucking homie tax. This your homie. Right. You always talking about, <laughs> he always talking about Gilly, my man. I'm like, yeah, you man. right. You know, gangsters stick together, nigga. Fuck right. Nah, you know me. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. I'm traditional too. So like, I loved Gilly way before I met him. So I can't act like I don't love a nigga when I meet him. You heard? Right. See, he he one of them type niggas. He love a nigga before he meet him, and then when he meet a nigga, he act like he don't love him. He he, he lied you to crazy. himself. Did you see this? Oh, oh, this nigga lying. We just saw. Listen, this no bullshit tax. We saw Big Daddy Kane like three fucking uh months ago. I went fucking crazy in the airport. Oh, oh this Kane, n- Kane was mad at me too. Tax. Kane told. Uh, listen, first of all, tax right. Kane old Brooklyn gangster. Yeah, he, yeah, he was mad at hey, me. Hey, tax. It's six in the morning, right? We we at the motherfucking airport. Kane walked past. I said. Oh, that look like Big Daddy Kane. He said, man, no, it ain't. Kane turned around. That nigga walked up on him. Here I am. R-A-W. Terrorist. <laughs> Hit a break. Trouble two. Phony MCs. I break. That nigga was like, yo. Yeah, what you listen, to do? That nigga put his hand on Wallow Child. I love what you're doing, brother. Chill the fuck out, man. No, but listen. This is what happened. I think I drew the tip on him, and he didn't want to be noticed because he had the mask on and all that. I, and, I, oh. and, I, and I made a spectacle and shit. And, I'm, and Gil told me, why the fuck you do? I said, man, that's Kane. I ain't letting that nigga walk by. I ain't never seen Kane. Like, is you kidding me? I've been dying for this fucking uh-huh. moment. 
I mean, exactly. this nigga want to be cool, man. Kane don't fucking know you. I said, how the fuck will he know me? <laughs> this big daddy Kane, he was fucking with Madonna. So you don't know that. Uh, Kane, exactly, Kane right? was fucking with Madonna. He was a bull back then. Yeah, Kane that, nigga was, that nigga was, he was definitely getting some legendary boxing in the 90s and the 80s. Yes, he was. And now listen, this episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by New none Amsterdam. other. Vodka. New Amsterdam vodka. Now, uh, life ain't going your way. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. You caught your woman cheating today. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. They told you your check was in the mail and that bitch didn't come your way. Shot of New Amsterdam vodka. It's distilled five times, filtered three times. If you speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, tres. For a clean, crisp finish. So you could drink it with anything. Straight up on the rocks. Make the classic New Amsterdam mule. Juice, soda, whatever your choice is. So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, you know what to do. Get you some New Amsterdam vodka. The official vodka of Barstool Sports and Million Dollars Worth of Game. And shout out to the New Amsterdam queen. You know, she, she don't like, she, she hate when I miss her shout out. Shout out to the New yeah. Amsterdam queen. Be at the crib cocktailing it up yes. with the New Amsterdam. Yes. Get you some. Right. I was just, I was going over some shit with Gil about the joint. What 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 do you think Gil would be doing in the joint? Will he be making Mac Jack for people, or will he be washing like a Maytag? Like, what would his job be in the joint? I don't. I'm like Gil. He might be Dominican in the jail. Like, what would that mean? Tax. Break it down for him. So, like the, the Dominicans, the Dominicans, they do they do some boxing. They put um they put pearls in the niggas' dicks. So when they go home, they can let their girl come. Like, for some reason, I think all the Spanish niggas got little dicks in because they be all tampering with their dicks. Yo, I don't know what's wrong with those. Yo, Tex, hold up, Tex. Yo, Tex, why you gonna throw me like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. The nigga told me, he said, we gonna throw Gilly under the bus today. I said, all right, say no more. <laughs> Tex, oh, so the nigga been talking to you, he said, no, yeah, no, no, you know that nigga. First of all, I want to get Tex's flowers, number one. Gotta get his flowers, Tex. Because Tex was the first nigga who brought me on his podcast. I ain't know what the fuck it was they was like tax tony got a podcast that shit popping you you go up you need to holler at him all right i got the call all right let's do it i got there we had a great fucking time so really tax yeah. you put me on to this podcast shit you introduced me shout out shout out to all the niggas that was doing it before us man because we, I'm, I'm just happy i'm happy that you're doing it you smell me i i'm i'm a nigga that i don't I love seeing niggas win because I always tell niggas if you help somebody win, the day you lose, that nigga that's winning could might help you win again. Yeah. So I don't got no problem with ever helping a nigga build up and get right. I think that's the problem right now in the game is that so much niggas be in secret competition when you don't even got to be in competition because the bags is everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So I just when I when I found out that y'all shit really took off, I was so happy because. People don't know how deep it go. Like, I got Gilly on the show, right? Just because I love Gilly and I was a fan of Major Figures, right? And I also wanted to roast you about that Chicken Man song you had made. That's why I really wanted you to come up because oh, I yeah, hated right, that shit. Okay, cool. He, 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 he still throwing shots. Nigga throwing shots from the penitentiary. Rapper. Yeah, me he throwing shots from the penitentiary. Not that ass nigga. It's cool. Go ahead. Keep grinding me up. Go ahead. No, I'm going to let you get it up. But then, but then, and then my son PNB Mark from out there in Philly that yep. was managing PNB Rock. Shout out to Mark. <laughs> He hit me while I was in jail and say, yo, my boy Wallow just came home. He just did a 20 piece. This nigga trying to get into podcasting. And I immediately just started busting moves, introducing him to the people that I dealt with so niggas could get million dollars worth of game off the floor. You know what I mean? Listen, listen. One thing I want to thank you for because you introduced me to Jonathan Mina. That nigga mm -hmm. right there. Listen, shout out to Jonathan Mina, man. A lot of y'all might don't know him. But he gave me so much game. I was on the phone with him and he would just call me, yo, do this, Wallow. Do this. Do this, do this. And that dude, yeah. really gave, he gave us a million dollars worth of game, and that all come from you, Tax. All, and, and it was just a yeah. plug because when we first started kicking it, me and you, you just was giving up all this information. Like, yo, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, damn. You know, because we live in a game where people really don't give out game. You know, people hoarded that shit because they think, oh, you know, they think you, they don't understand it's enough money, it's enough women, it's enough cars, it's enough jewelry, it's enough houses, it's enough for everybody. But I don't think a lot of people see that, and people just be like, "Man, some, like you said, it'd be competition." But I salute you for nah, like, that's why. That's yeah. why I recognize. I recognize the beautiful niggas. Like I told somebody the other day, I said, "Wallow and Gilly are some beautiful niggas. The shit they doing is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like y'all niggas just raised three million dollars in cash for y'all neighborhood, and y'all ain't even raised that shit for y'all podcast equipment." Mm -hmm. 
No. Y'all just was in the studio putting your own shit together. Y'all need to give yourself that money. <laughs> no, we this had to take, we had to take care of businesses. We had to take care of businesses. We had to take care of businesses. Like, like you understand? Why y'all niggas is going win forever though? Real shit. We might gotta rethink niggas. this shit though. No, you, you y'all y'all niggas. Niggas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we ain't giving out nobody no what. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? Tax, tax is like this. When you from the ghetto, right? And and you could come up, and you could come up, and you could get you know popular, or you become a celebrity. You don't have to use your own money to take care of your people in the hood. You can always utilize your influence to partner up with people that got money that want to be connected to your influence or be connected to what you got going on, and you can bless the community. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing yeah, wrong. Yeah, 100% facts. Ain't nothing wrong. It's a bunch of corporations that got billions of dollars out here that just want to partner up with people that they know is reliable, that can connect with the people that really need it. You see what I'm saying? We come from a place, you know, where, you know, we, we're part of the people that the world forgot about. You know what I mean? The ghetto. So it's like, that's all that shit is about, man. And that's why salutations got to be given to y'all for the simple fact, because I want to just know who else did that. What other podcast platforms took that initiative to say, yo, let's look out for our neighborhood. But see, because y'all from a neighborhood that y'all know went through so much detriment, it's probably some detriment that y'all might have caused in the past. You understand how much your neighborhood need replenishing, how much it needs to grow, how much people need education. That's why the whole name Million Dollars Worth of Game is important also because you giving away knowledge that people never gonna give. And some people scared to give. You know, some of these dudes are so caught up in their ego and self that the shit that you said, the little dirt, they would have never said it and they agree with you. But they would have never said it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because but they agree wholeheartedly with you. Yeah. But they would have never told little dirt that shit out loud because they don't want their friends to think they not with the so I don't know what these dudes is into. I know I've been outside so long that I don't even give a fuck what outside look like. And in and, and tax, you know, you know why? Because at the end of the day, you know, we was the little dirks. We was these niggas before they, exactly. before you feel what I'm saying. So for us, Dirk, I'm, I'm for us, I'm one of your biggest fans in the world, but I'm not your homie. I'm your OG. I'm your uncle. I'm your most, yeah, I'm the nigga, cuss, I'm your bro. big bro, I'm the big cuz, I'm the nigga that's gonna say, no, nah, dog, you slipping out here, man, you know why? Mm-hmm. Because I don't need nothing from you. I don't need your money, I don't need, so yeah. for us, so for us, it's genuine love when we say, no, nah, we fuck with y'all, man, don't let these niggas trick you off the streets, don't let these niggas yeah. put you in a place that you in, you don't deserve to be in because you already made it through the hard times. Once you mm-hmm. make it through the hard times, why the fuck do you want to go back to the hard times? Yeah, that who the fuck want to, like, yeah. why? Yeah, I don't like, understand. See, man, listen, man, that, that shit, that's, yo, know, when I seen that shit, man, I almost cried. I said, these niggas right here is doing, doing the work because I've been sitting in jail for over five years, my nigga. And, you know, I was a gangbanger back in the days. I stopped gangbanging in 2009. Right. And, I just be in here, all the little kids that come around me, they drop, they, they gang banging flags, whatever they are, folk, crip, blood, whatever they are, they drop it when they're around me because they see the power within me because I don't bang and all the niggas that bang be needing me. And the thing is this, this is what I tell niggas, what the fuck did a gang ever do for the neighborhood, yo? Like it could have started off correctly, it might have been to protect the neighborhood, but after that it went sour. You know, when I seen the Super Bowl, I was mad happy to see that performance. But at the same time, I said, look at what we're painting for the kids. Niggas got niggas in jail suits, dickies on, crip walking at the Super Bowl. Now, the thing is this. The same way y'all celebrate in prison culture, y'all gonna tell somebody, don't listen to Tax Stone, that nigga's in jail. But you got people crip walking on the fucking biggest stage in the world. Mm. Like, why is this shit even being celebrated? You know what I mean? Now, for the people who have came up out of being blood, crip, whatever gang, and, and gave back and, and did good, see, Snoop Dogg, the only fucking gangbang in America that ain't gonna go to jail. <laughs> Everybody else play games, they going. <laughs> so it's like, I don't like even Snoop to promote it, and I love Snoop. I respect Snoop as an OG, as an uncle, all that. You know what I mean? I respect my elders. But it's like, yo, it comes a time where we gotta talk to niggas and say, yo, ain't shit coming from this shit, nigga. Ain't shit coming from this. These niggas is killing niggas on the block over crack. Meanwhile, the Italian nigga got the pizza shop on his block for 40 years and been taking money off his block. But he not mad at him. He mad at the nigga that's selling crack and weed. Let me ask you a question. You just said something that was very interesting. You said you 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 you, you getting you getting the young brothers in jail to put the flag down. Like, what was, elaborate on explain that to me so I can understand. Well, what I do mostly is this. 
a lot of the a lot of the kids they are influenced by hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. So because I work in hip hop culture, they respect me. They take they take what I say seriously. Now since I've been in jail, I don't really start trouble. I don't get into it with people. Everybody know me. I'm cool, laid back. I take care of everybody. But since I've been in here, I've had several people who have issues with me in the street try to send people at me, and I've had to take care of myself so I can survive. You heard? So when the kids see you handle your, yourself in a way that they think, because see, violence is currency to these kids. They think the more drills you got, the more richer you are as a man. Meanwhile, I'm telling them when I came up, the dudes that was rich was the gangsters. So I don't understand the broke gangster shit that's going on outside today, where the guys that's doing all this violence are filthy, and they actually trying to get next to squares that got money and claim that they down with them. So what I do is I tell the kids, I say, yo, bro, where your moms work at? Where your pops? So then I say, all right, where your big homie work at? What does he do? Because, see, he's only famous in jail. And some of these niggas get home in civilization and women don't even care that their penis exists. So why would you even look up to a nigga that women don't even care about? Mm. Only little boys with no fatherhood is looking up to this person. And this nigga is such a fucking empty-minded person that he's about to put you through the same shit that he went through. What kind of nigga is that? That's not an OG. That's just an old head. A OG gonna give you a million dollars worth of game. He gonna say, yo, listen, this is how you gotta do it. I didn't get to do it that way, but I, if I could do it over again, I would do it this way. These old niggas is suckers. That's why I don't respect the old gang-banging culture, the, the, the extortion culture that these dudes try to do with hip-hop, with being regional. I don't respect none of it because, bro, if you really was in the street, believe me, you're not trying to be in the street. The mm-hmm. niggas that's 35, 36, 40, and they acting like they want to be in the street, man, them niggas wasn't outside. <laughs> they wasn't there, bro. Anybody tired of this shit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Nobody want nothing to do with this bullshit, bro. Absolutely. On, I want to elaborate on that, man. If you motherfucking, mm-hmm. if you motherfucking 35 plus, and you still acting like you a super duper street nigga, that's because you ain't you were no street nigga when you was in your twenties, man. You still trying to it's share up, because bro. if you was your street nigga when you was a teen and you was a street nigga when you were in your twenties, by the time you hit thirty, you ain't trying to be no street mm-hmm. nigga, man. You trying exactly. to get you trying to get some fucking money and get the fuck out the way because if you was really in the streets by the time you thirty, nigga, you done seen more niggas take that Escalade ride to heaven and meet the guy. Then, then you could even count, nigga. Mm-hmm. Before, by the time, by the time me and Wallow was motherfucking, by the time I was seventeen, Wallow was what fourteen. How many niggas done died? A lot of niggas we know died from like, Lord Larry to Lord Richie to, to, to a lot of niggas. Think about it. Yeah. So by the time you thirty, you done lost a, a shitload of niggas to gun violence, a shitload of niggas to jail, uh, your aunts and your grandmothers to cancer and all kinds of shit. Man, you trying mm-hmm. to get some fucking money and live life, man. You ain't out here 38 talking about, ooh, I'm tough. Ooh, look at me. Ooh, <laughs> exactly. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to prove myself. I'm a gangster. Ooh. So what's sad, what's even sad is up, watching man. the 40-year-olds try to act like the 17-year-olds. Right. They be reliving their second childhood. Yeah, like, come on, bro. Old go, niggas go, still go out be here. Go, oh, right. go get some bread and change and chill out. Right. Yeah, take care. Because I can't wait to knit a quilt. I'm going to knit a quilt like an old grandma when I get home. You ain't knit, you ain't knit no fucking quilts. Tax tell me he gonna knit a quilt. I'm in jail sewing right now. I'm in making yeah. shirts, nigga. I'm so bored. Oh, oh, oh so, oh, so, 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 hold so, up, so, hold so, up, so, up, no, 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 wait. So, tax, hold on, wait, because, because. Oh, well, you know, when Wallow was in jail, you know, he had multiple jobs, you know. He was motherfucking, he, you know, he was the coordinator for karaoke night. You know, he was, he, that, that nigga, you know, he was a lifeguard in the prison showers. He tell a nigga that in jail, yeah, I mean, he was, listen, he, he was a lifeguard in the prison showers. He also was a cook. You know, he was a chef up north where he got left up north. I, I knew how to cook. Yeah, what I'm saying? The nigga was, a, hey, listen, he was the captain of the wrestling team. They used to call him Dick Flair up there. You know what I mean? He'd be all on the block. Oh, Yo, this <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what I mean? Like the nigga had multiple jobs. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah. you mean to tell me Tax is up there teaching the gangbangers how to knit in sweaters? No, that's the thing. I'm not teaching them that. What I am <laughs> teaching them niggas is this. What I am teaching them niggas is this. Mind your fucking business because it's your most lucrative business. The other like thing that. I be teaching these niggas is this. I, I sew shirts. I really do. I'm dead serious. You know I'm from Honduras. We come from sewing. Okay. But, but um, 
What I, the only thing I really be kicking with the kids is like, man, just stay the fuck out the way because y'all sitting here, you know, it took me to go to the feds to really realize my history because the feds count your points up. So when I'm sitting there looking at all these petty crimes that I caught in serious crimes, I'm like, what the fuck? Now, the half of this shit was when I was a kid. I'm a grown man, and I never would do half the shit that I did when I was 14. Right. And what really made me start paying attention to history was this Me Too movement shit. Because I've seen Judge Kavanaugh almost not become the Supreme Court justice because a chick said that he grabbed her titty when, in college, freshman year. This nigga's 60 years old. Mm-hmm. and was about to lose some shit because of the history of grabbing a titty when he was a freshman in high school. And I said, damn, Tax, this is wrong that these people could go back and say that you did something wrong at 85. You know what I mean? I said, I used to throw rocks at cars on the highway back in the day. I would never do that shit as a grown man knowing that I could cause a 20-car accident. Mm-hmm. But I was a kid and I was stupid. But my mind is mature now. You, 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 give, you charge me for the shit that I know and understand. Don't don't fucking charge me for some shit that I did when I was twelve years old. Right mm-hmm. now, you know I got a bail when I first went to federal jail. When I first got to the feds, I got a bail that day because the judge felt that the case was completely weak and he gave me a bail. The AUSA took my my case to a higher judge the next day and they took my bail back because they said that I was a danger to the community because of my history. Because mm-hmm. I punched somebody in two thousand fourteen. Damn. This is why they have a bail. Mm-mm-mm. So I'm like, yo, in 2014, my life was changing for the best. It just so happened that somebody hit me and I hit them back and they just reported it to the police. Damn. And that shit took my fucking bail. I could have been home today because I got a bail on January 18th, 2017. But January 19th, they took the shit. Damn. So... You know, it's just certain shit that I'd be like, man, this shit is fucked up that we get charged for our history, the things that we did when we was kids. Like, I think about women. I remember there was some women I used to joke on when I was a kid, and I would call them hoes, and I would say, look, y'all hoes, y'all got the train ran on y'all. And a couple years later, as a grown man, I see these women on Facebook taking care of their kids and all kinds of shit, doing beautiful shit. And I said, nigga, you was over here judging this entire woman's character because she was promiscuous. Meanwhile, this bitch is the best mom on earth. Yeah. That's wild. And we all do that shit growing up young. We just don't fucking know. He texts. Well, it's like, Tax. I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, what's good, boy? She's still a hoe, though. She's just a good mom. This nigga's a fucking nut right She here. took the dicks. Man, you can't subtract the dicks, all the dicks she took. She slapped herself this in the nigga, face with, man. She talking. is what she is. She a great I mother. I ain't she ain't a hoe. She a I'm great mother, but she's the ultimate slorier. <laughs> now, now, you Listen. know, yeah, this nigga's crazy, Tex. Uh-huh. No, but I, but listen, I understand what Tax is talking about. How you could you could pay for some shit later in life that you did when you was younger, because we going through the same thing. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying right now. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But, Nigga trying to give us a lawsuit right now for some shit Wallo did when he was 18 what? of greatest foot. He grabbed a nigga titty in the yard. What? You feel Yo, this nigga lying. This nigga lying. Nigga, <laughs> nigga, nigga now we got him. some money. Nigga trying to sue us, man. This nigga lying on me. This nigga's lying on me, man. I don't know what the fuck he talking about. Because Wallo grabbed a nigga titty in the yard well, listen, 20 years ago. I want to know something. <laughs> This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Game Time. One thing about Game Time, it was created by the fans for the fans. I'm talking about if you're trying to score some last minute tickets, I'm talking about the great prices, unbelievable prices. Will you leave? I'm talking about they're there. I'm talking about sports, concerts, oh. shows, mm. guaranteed the lowest prices. They're mm. not playing no games. And guaranteed. guess what? Right? Yeah, guaranteed. Guaranteed the lowest prices. What you need to do, this one of the, I'm talking about, this is a great, I'm talking about outstanding ticketing app. And what you need to do right now, you need to download the, the Game Time app. Mm. Go put code dollars. That's D O L L A Z. And for your first purchase, you're getting twenty dollars off. Mm. We're giving you twenty dollars off your first purchase when you download the app. And I'm talking about, listen, we're going to take care of you. But I'm talking about this app is for the fans, by the fans. I'm talking about crack the code. I'm talking about last minute deals. I'm talking about last minute tickets. They create the best prices in the venue. Mm. No more looking through thousands of listings. How I'm talking about, that? listen, last minute price. I'm talking about last minute price drops in real times. What are you waiting for? I'm talking about game time. It's doing its thing. Take it a nap. Get it right now. Go on there. Code dollars. You're getting $20 off your first purchase. Game time. What made you get into the podcast game? How did it start? Who helped you? Who gave you the game? Well, shit. Seventh grade, right? I had a teacher. The nigga used to say, yo, you got a radio voice. And I never knew what it meant. 
But then the more and more I started listening to radio, I started hearing dudes with people's voices. And then I just used to talk shit. I started some shit called the Swagger Report when YouTube like first started, where I used to just roast niggas from my hood for being swaggerless. <laughs> so it started with that shit. Hold on, like, hold on, hold on. You used to roast niggas because they couldn't dress? Bro, you can look the shit up. It's still there. It's some shit called the Swagger Report by Tax Stone. Well, they, my name was Tax Dollar, and I think that was like 2000. I became Tax Stone in 2002. Go <laughs> but go ahead. What you used to do with there? But I just used to joke on niggas from the hood and just talk about whatever they did. And, and that shit was like, you know, like the first shit I ever did. But then as I was going on, I just was watching and my manager, she was managing Kid Fury from the Reed podcast. Okay. And she used to tell me, yo, tax, you need to get into this podcast shit is lit. Mm-hmm. So I was getting real popular on Twitter by promoting music. So Ebro from Hot 97 hit me. He was like, yo, bro, like what you trying to do? Cause you got a voice out here. So I said, yo, I'm trying to get into that podcast space. So Ebro said he was going to help me. Mm-hmm. So then about like every day I would speak to Ebro, you know, he'd keep telling me how he was going to help me. And then it didn't happen. I end up meeting Charlemagne at, um, at, um, at breakfast club. Cause I had an artist that I brought up there with at the time. And I told Charlemagne like, yo, the dudes that, um, that beat you up at the show, one of them niggas is dead right now. So he was like, what? And walked away from you me. You told him the dudes so- that beat you up at the show. Yo, yeah, the, 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 when Charlamagne got snuffed at um, at, um Breakfast Club, Go ahead. the nigga who, the nigga who snuffed him got killed the next week. Oh, man. So Charlamagne didn't know. So I told Charlamagne, and then Charlamagne just walked away from me. Like I don't know who the fuck this nigga is. <laughs> Later on that day, Angela E DM me. She was like, "Yo, Tax, you never met Charlamagne." I was like, "Nah, that was the first time." She was like, "Yo, he wanted to know if that story was true." You told him. So I sent her the article, and then she was like, yo, how do you know it's true? I said, because my man did that shit. He locked up for it. Yeah. So that was it. And then I went and did Headbutt a Bullet. I went and did a um, Brilliant Idiots podcast with Charlemagne, and the episode was called Headbutt a Bullet. And then from there, he was like, yo, Tax, you need to do a podcast. I said, I'm trying. And he helped me. And from there, we just fucking took off. Combat Jack, Kid Fury, and Charlemagne is the ones who plugged me into the game. Rest in peace to Combat Jack. Real shout out to Charlemagne and shout out to Kid Fury the Reed podcast. Shout out to them because even though Ebro ain't do nothing for you, he put the he put the he put the spark. He put the spark. And shout out to Ebro, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, I still got you know them dudes is like them dudes is real sensitive towards me. I don't know why because I joke on them a lot, but I ain't got no beef with them niggas. But he was mad at me because Charlemagne helped me, and I'm like, bro. I'm looking at the beef like Hot 97 and 105 got beef. Like, I thought that shit was like a joke. I didn't know, like, niggas was, like, serious. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When I found out the shit was serious is when the dude the dude who beat Charlemagne up, the nigga Flex actually paid that nigga to do that shit. That's when I said, oh, these niggas really got radio beef? I got to stay the fuck away from these niggas because I'm really in the streets and I be having beef and I don't want beef. <laughs> So this is when them dudes start coming at me, oh, tax, you a bitch and all kinds of shit. And I'm just taking it, just laughing because I'm thinking it's a joke. So like, as it goes on, the nigga Ebro ends up writing MTV, showing them my tweets, got me suspended for a week, all kinds of weird shit. And I was like, damn, I ain't even know this shit was serious like that. So, you know, it is what it is. I ain't got no beef with none of them. No, I, re- I respect dudes, you know what I mean? Even if they don't respect me, I respect them because one thing I respect about them is they know they're not going to do nothing to me. So yeah. that's where my respect comes from. He said, I respect. Now, now, <laughs> now when, when, when did you know you was taking off? When did you know, like, I got some serious shit here? What, was it an interview? Was it Where was it at? Damn. I think probably about the... The fourth or fifth interview I did, I started feeling like I had some shit going on. Mm-hmm. And then I had got an email saying that Russell Simmons wanted to come on my show. And I said, Russell Simmons, for what? And it bugged me out because he only did my show that day. Um, I think like Dr. Phil and the Today Show for his media role for his book. And then after that, it just it just went haywire. Like the label started emailing me, asking me to interview artists that I didn't like and shit. And it just went that way. Now, now, but, but how did you deal with the, you know, the labels emailing you and trying to get with you for the interviews? How did you deal with that? Well, well, some of the artists, I liked them, you know what I mean? But if I didn't like an artist or really want to talk to them, I felt like I might have disrespected them in the interview because of something I felt about them. I didn't do the interview. But, you know, they was real pushy about trying to do it. And the thing is this, I don't respect 
media run interviews. I don't like them. Oh, oh, man. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, we don't do that shit. That's me and Gwen. You don't do that shit because yeah. you, you think you're going to go interview with a nigga and then lead in, go interview with another nigga, and then lead on. in, go lead with another nigga, and exactly. then cut us. You got five interviews out. You got the same fucking fit on, talking about the same exactly. shit. Man, yeah. We ain't no, doing that shit. Doing that. We doing exclusives. And the thing is this. You know what they don't know? They don't even know their labels is hurting them by doing that. Yeah, it's too much. It's too, it's, it's too, it's oversaturating. I talk to labels. Them, I talk to labels about this shit. If you do all your media in two weeks, the two weeks later, the people who didn't get to see it, they don't see shit. So you're supposed to spread your media out. Right. You're supposed to go a million dollars worth of game on Monday and then do drink chance two weeks later. But or see, three weeks. Oh, oh, prime example, Lil Dirk. Shout out to Lil Dirk. Dirk, you said, no, I'm coming a million dollars worth of game, man. I'm letting y'all roll my shit out. Uh, y'all the only interview I'm doing. I'm letting y'all roll my shit out. We said, nigga, we gonna take your shit to number one, nigga. We gonna do everything in our fucking possibility that we can do in marketing and promoting mm-hmm. and take scenes. your shit to number one. Behind the scenes, everything. And shout out to Dirk because he want number one. And then now, he want number one. Like you said, it's a week later. His album out. He just did another big podcast. Now he's getting more marketing because this ain't exactly. about the, this about stretching this shit out. Yeah. This about the making artists, the right. artists don't know what the label doing. The label don't want to spend no money. So they let your ass come into New York City and you sit there in four days and do all your interviews in four days. No, you do you that shit in one out. day now. They they got they doing this shit in one day. Right. And I'm listening. Yeah, I see, see, Gil don't hear it. I got, I'm the one to be fucking dealing with labels and shit. And I'm telling them, like, listen, let me do this. Yeah. You, you ready to spread them out? And then later on, Two weeks later, they calling me like, "Damn, Wilder, you was right." Ain't nobody talking about them now. Right? They work the exactly. whole. They work the week of fuck. They work their whole yeah, shit yeah. out in the week. Yeah, exactly. You don't let these niggas exhaust all their remedies within one week, and now people don't care about it. So now look at the look at the artists, right? Who who leave number one, and then they go back up to like about number two or hit number one again. Mm-hmm. This happens because the way you spreading out your fucking media. You can't just give everybody in one week because you chasing first week numbers. Right. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? Like, how so- many people went platinum, but they ain't go platinum in, in a timely fashion, but they still went platinum. Right. But, but you got to understand, a lot of times, there's no disrespect to nobody personally, but a lot of people at the labels that be working this shit, they don't be understanding the culture, and right. they don't and they don't understand temperature and the pulse of the culture. Because a lot of them, it's not like back in the day, New York City days. Back in the day, these motherfucking A and R's and the uh, the, uh, the marketing department, they was out here in the streets. They understood the pulse. They right. understood That's certain right. shit. Right. They understood that. Oh no, we got to make sure they go to this one record store. We got to make sure they go here. We got to make sure they be here. We got to make sure certain spots. And you know, the, it was a little different. But like that rollout, like you said, is really important. Artists come out. All right, bang. They got the first single out. They dropped the album. Bang. All right. Everybody talking about that. So now you're going to do the, when you go do an interview, you might be talking about that it was coming. But like a month later or weeks later, it might be another single out. This is some different exactly. energy. And, it, and it's some different energy and it could come like that. I remember when Pooh Shicey came out, free Pooh Shicey. He free come through How Lovers. He went number one, went down. He dropped. Came and did our show. You know what I mean? Because nobody really talked to him in a manner that we could talk to him. Bang. Shot back up to number one. But it was mm-hmm. something to do after the fact of the album coming out. You know, you could exactly. do you could do an interview before the album that could drop because because we we control our own shit. We could drop that shit whatever we could drop our shit whenever we want to drop our shit. We own our shit. Mm-hmm. So we say if we drop it. Or you, you coming out on like Dirk said, "Lo, can we do this on a you know? Can we drop it like a day before so I get time before?" I said, "Cool, we are gonna drop it on Thursday. We usually drop on Sundays. We drop the bitch. Wham." They went crazy, but the build up to it, everything is about the build up. Everything is about That's the behind fact. the scenes, that content and all that shit that to, to let people know, damn, this is what's going on. This was the build up. Right. They seeing it, they seeing it. The the blogs is is gripping that shit up. Because at the end of the day, if you drop an interview and these blogs ain't gripping that shit, something ain't right. It ain't it ain't catching that shit. It ain't, you know. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you could have went, you could have did whoever podcast. Yeah, there's a lot of podcasts that's popping, but ain't none of them niggas coming to Chicago. Ain't none of them niggas yep. gonna come to the jungle. Ain't none of them niggas gonna risk their life for this shit. We from nope. this shit. This shit normal mm-hmm. to us. We from yep. this shit. And we was that, right at know, home. Crazy. I noticed that. I said, look at this beautiful shit. I said, they the only niggas in the world over there. I said, who the fuck else is gonna go to that motherfucking do that interview? <laughs> but not just that. But see, Tax, this is the whole thing. We established that we go, like, like certain people, we gonna have you come to the studio. You see what I'm saying? Right now, we're in the process of building this massive studio, but that's another story. But the studio we got in the field, we're going to have people come there, but 
we 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 to the point where though we might get a call and you know and certain people we got we got like a list of certain people that we fucking with heavy. So if we get a call or something, we shooting at A Town. The baby hit us, mm-hmm. we in Charlotte. What's Dirk hit? We there. We over there, we over there, LA. We in Miami. Mm-hmm. Wherever you wherever you at, we'll come to that shit. We'll go to we so so New York, we always in New York because you know some people come up there for whatever. But like it's about like just getting up. Like we we big on traveling, going to the artists and doing that. We not no we not no just just, just no spot. We gonna go wherever. So we already do that shit anyway. And, mm-hmm. and, and and what the and what the and what the record labels don't be understanding is right. If if I got an artist right and I'm rolling him out, I'm going to I'm gonna send my artist to the motherfucker that I know gonna get the best interview and gonna bring the best shit out because when everybody's bring the best shit out of that right, kid. right because when everybody's hitting YouTube and everybody's googling them right now when they I want this interview to represent him yeah. I don't want them to come up and they got five oh, interviews to, they got five Johnny interviews O'Body. to pick up hold on low they got five interviews to pick from and they don't pick the right one they pick this one now they watching some dry shit. Now they watching the artist, his album coming out. They watching some super dry shit on them that they not interested in. That's not driving them to go listen to the album. We we done, we done put artists on here that after the motherfucking interview, all you see in the comments is, damn, I fuck with that nigga. I fuck with that nigga now. Damn, I ain't, I ain't never was in tune with him, but I fuck exactly. with him now, man. That nigga thorough, man. That nigga this, he this that. That's why I know y'all niggas doing what the fuck y'all supposed to do because I watch everything. So I see that. I see that. And, then, and the last time I seen that was when I was dropping my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm going to tell you some real shit. And I'm going to tell you some real shit. And then you know this. If anybody know, you know this, Tax. And then it be the artist that supposed to come through, not not on the Titanman tip, but you you know, people or fans always ask, what about this artist, this artist, this artist? Then you had an artist that's supposed to come through, but them niggas be scared to come through, not on no physical shit, but be scared because they can't dictate the interview. And we gonna ask him what yeah. the fuck we wanna ask him. And a lot of this shit, this music shit, it be an illusion or where dudes just be in the character mode, whereas though the character supersede who they really is in life, and they don't wanna get around motherfuckers that's gonna ask them some real shit. We ain't trying to blast nobody or lay no landmines, but we're gonna ask you yeah. shit that the people wanna know. We ain't asking Man, about no beef either. So 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 you, you know how niggas be. They be scared. They don't want to they they pick certain platforms. Let me go over here safe. Let me go over here safe. No, I can I dictate it. I right. can be this. I can be that. You see I certain can't do niggas, that with them niggas. You be in spots, you see certain niggas, you walk up, damn nigga, when you getting on the show, motherfucker tell you shit like, man, you know. I got oh, when I come to y'all, y'all ask that real shit. Y'all, so y'all, what the fuck yeah, are you yeah, talking about? That's what we supposed to ask. The power, the power shit, the power 105 concert right before I got locked up 2016. I seen Buster Rhymes. I said, yo, Buster, you got to come on my show, my nigga. He said, hell no. You be asking crazy shit. I said, what crazy shit I be asking, Buster? <laughs> so I know what you're saying because before I interviewed Plaz, Plaz and his brother super pressed me before the interview. Like, listen. You ain't going to ask this or ask that. And I was mad high. I just was sitting there laughing at them because I'm like, I'll beat both these little niggas up. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, whatever, bro. Like, them questions y'all asking me to ask, I wasn't even going to ask that shit anyway because I ain't really no goofball nigga, but I ain't on that type of time. But I, I, I get y'all drift. Like, I'm, y'all lucky I'm high, though. I'm chilling, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> what was your, Yo, what was the best interview you ever done? Damn, ever? Yeah, yeah, like out of, out of, out of when, when you was doing tax stone. What was the best in the well, I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you the one that the fans like the most, which is surprising. My fans like my therapy episode the most yeah. that I first did with my therapist. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's major. That shit crossed barriers. Like, like to this day, other podcasts, like like podcasts that's like in white genres, they yeah. take the podcast and repost it on their shit. Yeah. So I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say the second Beanie Siegel interview. And what was it about that one? The, Shout the out to Beans. The second Beanie Siegel interview was big because that's when he had just got knocked out by T. Free Bay at the concert. Mm-hmm. So everybody wanted to hear from Beans. You know what I mean? And it was like, I was such a Beans fan for so many years. I was like, I had hit the nigga up like, yo, bro, please don't jump out the window because of that because any nigga can get knocked out. Anybody can get knocked out. Time. I got knocked you know out by I mean? Dead Eye Lou back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he, he knocked Lou no, clean saying, out Lou, hit the ground, rolled up under like, a car like he life. worked at Jiffy Lou. <laughs> he shocked me, wham, I went down. Yeah, yeah man. Rolled up under the car. 
That nigga is stupid. No, I actually did roll up under the car. That's real shit. I rolled uh, up under the car. I, you he know, ain't come out to Lou left. Lou turned around, look at me. I start, What's up? I, I start changing the oil. Up. I rolled up under the car. I start changing the oil. I gave the motherfucker oil change. Hey, hey Lou. Hey, hey, Lou. Hey, hey, Lou. Turn around, asks all the niggas on the block. What's up? Like on some Devo shit. Niggas was like, nigga, Man. what? There ain't nothing up. We just <laughs> see like, how you just punched him. They ain't got nothing to do with you. Talk about. I ain't got nothing. Ain't that your cousin? Ain't that your cousin? He was my fifth cousin. That man, that's a fifth cousin. Man, you know that shit ain't real. That shit don't count. You talking about? You know what I'm saying? That nigga's that nigga's a chump. That nigga's a chump, man. That's my cousin through marriage, man. I don't know that nigga like that, man. <laughs> nigga start bitching. Oh, start remixing shit. So, so. But yeah, that, that interview was big with Beans because so many people wanted to hear from him. And I think the squares, the squares wanted to hear him more than the street niggas, I feel, because that's, the squares are crazy on the internet. Yeah. They're on the internet calling, they calling him pussy because he got knocked out. I said, bro, anybody can anybody get, knocked, get out. knocked out. How many times you got knocked out in your life, Tax? Nah, I never got knocked out. I've been knocked down. <laughs> oh, well, I ain't get knocked out. I got knocked down. No, you. No, because I was conscious. Yeah. I just rolled up under the car. So yeah. if I roll up under the car, obviously I did, wasn't knocked out. I was knocked yeah, down. Yeah, so, oil change. Yeah, and I hooked up the, the, the car. Whoever no, car was, tune up. He, that I mean, car, that car, they like. They was like, damn, whoever done this shit. I know he drove away different. He was the first nigga <laughs> change. Hey, he was the first nigga change the battery from up under the hood. Yeah, I got. I, I, I took care of that joint, man. I took care of that car, man. I, that's the day I knew I could I had I could have been an inspiring mechanic after that shit <laughs> just from that sucker punch. Yeah. You know what I mean, because you know I thought about life when he when he sucker punched me, man. That shit was a lot of but shit. Those shit, them, that interview crossed barriers, and the reason I was hyped was because I love the roots. You heard? I love the roots. So the first tweet I seen was from Quest Love talking about listening to the BDC go on taxis, and that shit had me hyped as a motherfucker. I said, nigga, Quest Love listening to my shit. Yeah. So you know. What I mean? I was hype off that. You know, That's Quest Love up. got a podcast too now. He in the yeah, game. I heard. He in the game. Yeah, Quest is doing his thing. You know, shout out to Quest. I'm talking like there's a lot of podcasts out here now. I'm, I'm happy that y'all niggas did all the shit y'all did because y'all just made it a lane for me to get some more money when I touch down. Yes, yeah, sir. absolutely. Yes, sir. You know what, kids? Listen, the whole thing is like this, man. It's enough. It, everybody, you you know how it is. Everybody got a different ear. You see what I'm saying? And everybody like to they like to get their their, their commentary from different people, you know, different slangs, different mm-hmm. energies, different humors. So it's enough space for everybody. So there's no reason to trip out and nothing about that. Mm-hmm. Now, since you've been in jail, right? Who who are some of the people that, that you could shout out? First of all, I want to give a major shout out to Bearline, right? Because Bearline, we was on the phone with Bearline. She called us. She's like, you, listen, Bearline, that's your fucking campaign manager, bro. When I say that's <laughs> when I say Bearline love you, man, like sis. She, she, she better love she, me. Listen, she bearline is real people, man. She and, and she out here. She really got an ear to the street. She knows she know music. She's gonna be mm-hmm. one listen, she's gonna be one of these presidents, the vice presidents, one of these labels in a minute. I'm telling you. Now man. you know one thing about Barilon, Barilon Grind, man. I like Barilon. I met Barilon at P and B Rock, um, feeling like Diddy video in Philly. Okay. Word. She was um interning for Maryland and Ciroc. And I never forget, she took a bus to Philly and bought a fucking uh, 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 box of Ciroc to the video shoot because I think I know um, Maryland. Ciroc was for product placement. Yeah. And, 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 and Word, so, when y'all connected, mm-hmm. what happened? So once that day after we connected, she just was hanging around and I would always be around. I'm like, yo, this little chick like the work. She was hustling. So I just always kept her around. So she had hit me, be like, yo, where you at, Tax? I'm like, pull up, pull up. You know what I mean? So she went through a couple things where people tried to like, you know, force out the industry. And I'm a street nigga. So I'm like, bro, I ain't with that corny shit trying to stop nobody money. You know what I mean? Because of an argument type shit. Like stopping somebody money is like the most serious thing you could do. So yeah. when when I was, when, I, when somebody hit me, up on something like, oh, we gonna make sure Barilon don't eat. I was all the way against that. I was like, oh, no, nah, we not doing that. I actually called up the next week to do my podcast with me to show them what my position was. So that's why me and Barilon got the type of bond we got because she understand that it was niggas there with her when it was raining outside even though it's sunny outside now. You understand? Yeah, and she, and she I'm talking about she, like, man, she, she, listen, man, bro, man, she holds you the fuck down, man. In, in yeah, a lot of in a lot of in a lot of rooms, so she's solid. Shout out to Bear Line. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Manscaped. I love Manscaped. Keep me clean and keep me fresh. It just keep it just you know it, it handle everything down there for me. I'm talking about they got everything for you: the weed whacker, ear and nose trimmer. I'm talking about the lawnmower. They got everything. They got crop preserver. Crop. I'm talking about the the magic mat. I'm talking about they got everything. 
I'm talking about Manscaped. And guess what? You get 20% off and free shipping when you use code GAME at manscaped.com. One thing about Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Support us and head over to manscaped.com and use the exclusive code GAME at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Um, you want to take care of yourself down there. You want to make sure that everything is clean, smooth, and you know what's going on. One thing about Manscaped, it helps you know what's going on below the waist. And so, you know, you'll be able to see things in the right way and you just be smooth and you'll be clean down there. Right now, stop playing. Treat yourself so you get the grooming, the best grooming down there. You also get the weed whacker. You also get the prop preserve. I'm telling you, you get everything. Manscaped.com. Listen, use code game. You're getting 20% off of free shipping right now. What are you waiting for? Manscaped.com. Since you've been down, like who who some of the who some of the players in the hip hop game that fuck with you, man, that just like that reach out to you, hold you down, like kick it with you. Who some of them? Well, shit. Let me see, cause I be staying the fuck away from these niggas. I'm scared of them. You heard? But um, like the, the same people I've been fucking with. You know Charlemagne. You know what I mean? That nigga PNB Rock always holler at me. Charlie Bread, like, mm-hmm. like you know, it's just the, the regular traditional people. I spoke to Uzi the other day for like two hours. That nigga's purely solid. You know what I mean? Solid Uzi. Like, um, Kodak is official. Kodak always do right. You know what I mean? It's just I certain niggas. I don't, I don't really fuck with too many. Like, I got more industry friends that's at the labels, you know what I mean? Than the, than the artists because the artists don't like me. I be talking shit about them. They can't even take a joke. You say one joke about them, it'd be a whole beef. Like, I had gotten to an issue with Meek and I wasn't even trying to diss that nigga. Mm-hmm. I you see. know what I mean? So that's why I know I got to watch the fuck I say because I ended up in beef with an artist that I was listening to every day. Thank you. Yeah, but but you know what I liked that interview too when y'all was in the uh, y'all seen that joint when I came y'all was in the matter of fact I seen that joint when I was in jail and I had my you know mm-hmm. joint I, I that that joint when y'all was in the, uh, the rafe or something. in the rafe that's the first yeah, time yeah. y'all y- y'all was on some shit y'all first really time had you to seen get a rafe huh first time you seen yeah. a rafe yeah that's I was what you was about to say you first time you seen a rafe yeah it's like you was like it's got the stars in it uh, I was in the cell I'm like what the fuck is that. Look like the sky. It was crazy. That shit was crazy, man. You know, to mm-hmm. see it like in real time. And y'all was driving around in the joint. That was that was a dope ass interview. Yo, how was you shooting? Listen, how was you shooting your shit on the phone or a camera? Where? In the in the car? No, yeah. What you had a camera or a phone? Oh no, I had some GoPros. I had some GoPros hooked up in the car and shit. Oh, so so you was just you was shooting your shit on GoPros and shit like that, man. My nigga, I would shoot my shit anywhere the same way y'all was doing. That's why I laugh when I see y'all doing y'all shit because I'm like, yeah, them dudes is from, they from where they from. They gonna pull up on niggas. Like, that's what you're supposed to do because I did that interview with Meek in Atlanta. Like, that wasn't on in New York or Philly. I had flew down to Atlanta to do that. Fucking right. Gotta yeah, that's, get it, man. That's, that's one thing about us. We gotta get it. That's one thing now. Welcome to another episode of Million uh-huh. Dollars Worth of Game Ben the Spotlight. Today yes, we got sir. Young Mobile. Listen, man, I'm talking about this dude. He do the storage game. He got the storage game on lock. He's not playing. He's making moves with the storage game. Young Mobile, Mailbox Millionaire Academy, right? Mm. We got him on here. He's gonna give you the game of how to get in the storage game. Young and nigga also getting give that you a money. Free course. Now, tell us how this shit come about. You listen, Young Mobile, give us the game. Tell us how where you started at, where you come from, and how, how does it become a thing? Yes, sir. First and foremost, I thank y'all for giving me the opportunity, man. It's, yes, it's sir. a blessing. Y'all giving out a million dollars worth of game, so I'm ready to do the same thing, right? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. 29 years old, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, right? Serial mm-hmm. entrepreneur, commercial real estate investor, story like anybody else, right? Every hood got their own jungle, whether you're in Brooklyn, Philly, L.A., Miami, everybody got their own jungle, right? So welfare, food stamps, free lunch, we come up on that. Mm-hmm. Started rapping, that didn't work, right? Started playing ball, that didn't work. Next thing you know, I got into the streets, right? And when I realized, like, yo, it's only three opportunities that they tell us we could do is black men coming up in the hood. Mm-hmm. So that's when I got into real estate, because I'm thinking, like, I need, I need another way out. And all I need is the, the will and the skill. I don't need to have a wicked jump shot or the best bars to do real yeah. estate. So I got into real estate, jumped into some courses, right? Start marketing and finding motivated homeowners that are looking to sell their properties. So seven years ago, that's when I got into the real estate game, mm-hmm. right? My first deal was a two-family in Brooklyn. Got this property under contract for $590,000, right? But here, here's the game, right? I had no money. It was my first deal. I was making $55,000 working at Pepsi, and I couldn't afford the mortgage. So out of desperation, it was either I was going to lose the deal or figure out a way to pay for it. So I started going hard. I went and got a mentor. He connected me to a capital partner. So a capital partner is somebody that comes in who got some money that could put the bread up, but you got to get a 50% equity split. So we bought the property. I put no money out of my pocket, paid $590,000 for it, put it on the market, sold it for $1.2 million. I made six figures in real estate, my very first deal. 
So just imagine, it was like not even about the money, just the opportunity of me being able to do something outside of what I knew, which was rapping, trapping, and playing ball. So I took that money and I started to double down, buy more properties. Now I got 40 doors right now. But when you buy more properties, you're dealing with people. You're dealing with tenants. They call you, the toilet is clogged, kitchen sink is leaking, noise, kids is upstairs banging, right? So I said, how can I make money in real estate without having to deal with tenants? Oh, that's crazy. Okay. I had this one apartment. You remember the joint? I had an apartment before, right? And that was a crazy thing. Like, the, like it was just... It wasn't even. It was just noise all the time, right? Because the kids. I didn't, I didn't know I could. I didn't know you could say something to the fucking. Oh, you was a bitch ass nigga. You supposed to be like you supposed to go knock on the door, yo man. Tell them my fucking kids shut up, man. No, I wasn't gonna do that. I'm trying to fucking sleep, man. No, I'm, I ain't want to get into no <laughs> scuffle or none of that shit. But I ain't know that that you, these motherfuckers be calling y'all about but that. They call the property manager, and the property manager called me. So, so the so property manager is the guy that you hire. So once you get these 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 whatever units doors. You gotta pay somebody to, to deal to with manage this shit. It. That's a fact. And every time they come to you, you know I gotta fix this. You know I gotta. All right, so go ahead. So it's cutting into my cash flow. So I'm thinking, how could I still make money in real estate, get the benefits, but don't have to deal with tenants, trash, toilets? That's when I got into the commercial real estate game, which is self storage facilities. So I jumped in. I purchased my first self storage facility, an 88 unit storage facility in Pennsylvania, right? And now with the storage facilities, I don't gotta deal with tenants, right? I don't deal with toilets. I don't deal with trash. A lot of the tenants, when they put their items in the unit. They don't even come back for years. So you're not getting no phone calls, right? It's low turnover. The cash flow is crazy. And guess what? But the people still got to pay, though. What if they don't pay you? That's what I love about it. It's only 30-day leases, right? So in an apartment, you got a year lease where the storage unit is 30 days. So as soon as they don't pay, you could catch it, get them a 30-day notice. And then we don't even go by eviction laws with the storage game. We go by lien laws. So if you don't pay, I could put a lien on your belongings in the unit. Then we throw it up for auction, and then whatever the profits is, you just take back whatever I was owed. Oh, you know what's crazy? That's what happened. To, uh, that's what happened to my man. My, my, that shit. He said, "Wow, you know these motherfuckers took all my shit out of store." I said, "What?" <laughs> they took his shit, sold him. Tell me he had some real expensive shit in there, and they got rid of him. But they sold. I said, "They ain't sell that shit." He, and it was like he was like a, not even like two months late, man. He forgot about it. He wasn't even late. He had the money. He forgot about that shit. Yeah, yeah. That's why you you, you guaranteed your money. Right now, if you want to get the free course from Young Mogul, what you need to do is you need to text GAME to 347-429-6496. 347-429-6496. Text GAME. He's going to give you a free course on how to get into the game on storage units. Now, keep giving it to him, man. You got to keep giving it to him, man. Listen, listen. This is simple, right? Anybody that want to get real estate, I'm going to break it down, right? I'm on a million dollars worth of game. Give them the game. So I got to give y'all me and I was with the game. Right? I like to give information that you can execute right after this episode. Right. Literally. Okay. Right, right after this. Right after this episode. So Do this you need money to execute this? No, you don't need Break no money. That shit all you need down. is the will. All you, all you need is the ambition and the want. Right. right break <coughs> it down. So this is how it's going to go. Right. Somebody that's at the bottom in the streets trying to figure out how they're going to make money with the storage units. First thing, you got to have some decent credit. Right. If you don't got decent credit, but in my course, we teach you how to fix your credit for free. Right. Now, if you don't have decent credit, get somebody else. You got to have a 680 or above minimum. You go and apply for a credit card, right? But not just any credit card. We, we got to be strategic and know which credit cards we're applying for. So young homie in the streets, right? You apply for the Chase Freedom Flex credit card, right? Let's say you get approved for $500 only. But what me, most people don't know, when you get the Chase Freedom Flex card, right, they give you a $300 sign-on bonus as soon as you apply. So now you got a free $300. So then you take that money, you go open up your LLC. LLC is a couple hundred dollars depending on what state you're in. You took my three, $400. Is that it? Um, yeah, that's it. There you go. You, so you got the sign-on bonus. I'm pretty sure you got the credit. You just got to cash it out. Well, most people, they get the credit card, and they just know the limit. They don't look at the details behind it. Mm -hmm. So if you get a $500 approval, $300 sign-on bonus, you literally got $800 now, yeah. right? Yeah. So then you go and get you your LLC. That costs you a couple hundred dollars. With that credit card, now you want to structure your LLC the right way, get a website, get a virtual address, right? Phone number, fax number. Make sure it's legit. The bank's not going to give money to just Joe Blow off the street. You got to set yourself up the right way. Right. Now you got your LLC set up, set up the right way. Then you could go to three different banks, right? Navy Federal Credit Union. If you structure it the right way, you just can't jump out there and do it, right? Follow right. the blueprint, $25,000, 0% business credit card, right? Citizens Bank, Fulton Bank. You get $25,000 each, right? 0%. Right. Now you got $75,000 from zero. You up now, seventy five k. Then you take the $75,000 and you can put a down payment on a $750,000 self-storage facility. This is how you do it with the SBA. 
See, most people heard about the SBA because of COVID PPP loans, but it's been out since 1953. Mm. The SBA 7A loan is specifically designed for people that's looking to buy self-storage facilities, for newbies, and they finance you up to 90%. Mm. So all you got to do is come to the table with 10%. So a $750,000 self-storage facility, you got $75,000 in business credit, now you in the game. No money out of your pocket up front. And then they're going to say, okay, but I got to pay it back as debt. Well, this is how we break it down. You own a storage facility. We know on average you probably got 100 to 300 people moving in and out on a weekly basis. They get hot, tired, hungry. I'm going to go get a vending machine. That's just $1,000, $1,500. Put it on my facility. Now I got additional twelve grand coming in every single <laughs> year. They get hot, tired, hungry. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. But I got the vending machine. Then I'm going to say, listen, I got some little homies, my cousins, my aunts. Listen, let's go start a moving company. Because in the units, you don't want to be in and out lugging stuff, right? You want to pay somebody. Why have them go up the street when they could come to you and now you got a moving company on your facility with a vending machine, right? And then you could partner with another company and say, listen, you got cargo vans. How about I give you a referral and you cut me a commission for everybody I send that need transportation. So now you generated like $50,000 in additional revenue every single year from that acquisition. And what I love about commercial real estate the value of your facility increases by how much money you bring in. So $500,000 in net income every year will give you $500,000 in value. So now you flip it, cash out, five hundred dollars pay off the credit cards. You up, no money, you started. If you want to keep it, pass it on to your family. This you nigga giving out game. You this nigga giving out serious <laughs> game. You refinance, right? Because when you re refinance, the bank is now going to give you 80% of the new value. You just raised it $500,000. You, you refinance, get, like, get the equity back, pay off the cards, you're still in the game, and it's in your last name, your family. That's a legacy play. And you did this starting out with zero, nothing, a full blueprint. That's how you do it. How many storage units you own right now? Three. So eight, we, got, we got an 88-unit storage facility, 104-unit storage facility in Tennessee, and 104-unit storage facility in uh, Columbus, Georgia. How you deal with it in Tennessee and you all the way up in PA? So you, we just we were just talking building. You said you got a storage unit, right? Yeah. When last time you been there? I ain't been there ever. Exactly. So you could manage it remotely. My shit just sitting in there. Cause it ain't you don't have tenants running up and down all day. Nobody living in your units. But Why? who handled with the key shit? I'm just trying to figure out. Oh, like, you get your own self in. In my shit, you 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 go through the gate, shit open up. You get there, you got a little code, you punch in, boop, boop, the door open, you walk in, you go to your unit, you got a lock on your shit, boop, boop, you pull Let your shit up. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> how, how much is your unit? Did one you I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> and how long have you had your shit in there? Probably over a year. Why you ain't get your shit out? Because uh, I moved into a whole new house and I just bought new shit. Most of the people do that. That's what it is. So it was like I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't want to take no old shit to no new Ooh, house. Scott. So I just bought new shit and still got the old shit. Got bump hit. boxes, got TVs, and, 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 all type of and, and, shit. And your card and your card is attached Auto to that, pay. so they just keep hitting that motherfucker yeah. on other pay. So you yeah, they activate sign my card. So you gotta sign the order like when you doing this shit. So we actually give you a. Ten dollar uh, discount, right? Listen, we take ten dollars off. Yeah, you want that shit to keep hitting. to be able to do the auto pay, and then you sign up auto pay. And Gilly, you you busy, you running around million dollars worth the so game. About, so you saying you you, you getting around? my money, nigga, for nothing? Yeah, so, so how many people running around? <laughs> how, so many people. That's that's the majority of people that get storage because they busy, right? They moving around, they downsizing. And even in today's climate, right? You're talking about through a pandemic, a lot of people started moving out of the inner cities, right? They're going to suburbs, trying to downsize. If you downsize these apartments, they making them even smaller. So you don't even have space for your items. You got to put them in a the storage unit. It's recession proof. And, and so how do how <laughs> do sizes, like, 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 how do you play off of the size thing, like, uh, you know, and, and like, give me the, give me the minimum size that you be having, and what's the price point of me renting it once a month? So it varies. You got five by ten, ten by fifteen. So ten by fifteen is the average size unit. You feel me? So you talking about one bedroom, two bedroom, right? Right there, it's about one hundred and thirty dollars a month. That's probably what I pay. God damn! And how many units you got total? Is all yours wow. that size or are they smaller? Well, no, it, it it varies based upon like you got I got five by tens, ten by fifteens. Some 20. niggas need bigger joints. Yeah. You you know they want to store some crazy. You shit. store do boats. People, people cars, store boats in them. Boat, yeah. So in Florida, it, that's when it's really hot with storage for cities because a lot of people got boats and yachts. Where they they gonna keep it on their property? You gotta put it in the storage. So unit. so do you have a outside gated unit too? Like where people could like pull big shit up in there? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my God! So so what is that? If I got like a a boat, well, is I'm paying different? Like how much is I'm paying a month? Yeah, you paying more. You talking about four fifty, four seventy five a month? And they keep them bitches in there all. Just pull them out. Pull them out when you're ready. When you're ready to hit the water. Yeah, you <laughs> put, go in, put your truck, tie it to the back of your truck, pull right out. You head to the beach, baby. Yo, man, this shit is crazy. Yeah. And you 29. 29 years Doing old. Doing all this amazing shit. That's a fact. I got one question. Can nigga hold some? <laughs> Yo, of course. Let me hold something. No, no, so, <laughs> so, so lucky. Yeah, yeah. Nigga no, talk about, no, I got 99 storages over here yeah, and 111 yeah. over listen, here. Luckily, yeah. 642 over here. Nigga, that's a lot of See, fucking so you, you basically, you basically <laughs> thankful that your basketball game was trash. Because yeah, I'd have cooked you it. Couldn't go, you couldn't go nowhere with your game. What, you know, because he talking about, yeah, I used to play basketball. Man, I, I don't know why he threw that out there. Fuck you threw that out there I'd have barbecued you better be lucky this young your game was trash, man. Yeah. Did they know about you in New York City? Was your game like that? No, look. They know about you in Brooklyn? No, you know what they yeah, said? Up until like 10th grade, and I, said, then I, I got cut from JV, so it was over. You, you oh, know yeah. what they said? They said that nigga Ben started doing real estate in the ninth grade, shooting all them bricks. <laughs> all them bricks. He was laying bricks. He was, he was oh, laying like bricks back in the night. He was laying bricks. <laughs> Facts, facts, so, facts. so basically, this shit right here. Listen, first of all, for anybody out there that want to get a free course on how to get into the storage game, I'm talking about Mailbox Millionaire Academy. Listen, text GAME to 347-429-6496. 347-429-6496. Text GAME. He's going to give you a free course. What is in this course? In this course, I'm breaking. So everything I just told, I just gave them a play for free to execute right now, right? right. But I break that down in detail. What banks to go to, how to complete mm. the applications, how do you get the reward points? How to be able to bring out the most cash off your credit? Now you got the capital. How to go and find these facilities, right? Mm. So I give a play right now. Biz buy sell. That's a website. It's a biz. biz buy, it's biz buy sell. Biz buy sell. That's a business brokerage website where you got motivated, tired business owners. You might own a trucking company or a commercial cleaning franchise. You own a self storage facility, but you tired. You ready to sell it? Oh, so you might you might have a bunch of restaurant equipment. Exactly, and you go on that website. Recording studio. And you buy it now for cheap. That's a website. you. So I teach you how to go on that website, fish through, and amongst other websites, how to find these facilities, get them under contract, and then you raise the money. You get the money, and now you go buy it, and you break bread. See, a lot of people want to do it on their own. That's the problem. If you bring two, three people in, and we all got the capital, and we go buy it, because I got partners too. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't everything on my own. We got to bring people in. But if you got these strategies, this is how you could go out there and really get in the game. I teach them that in full detail, how to evaluate, underwrite. Literally everything you need to go buy you self just gave a dude, so no if money. A, so if a dude like Gil used to be right now in a yeah. couch warrior, he's sitting on the couch, ain't got nothing, fucking somebody refrigerator door up, ain't got nothing going on in life, you know what I mean, what he used to do. If you on the couch right now, listen, this is for you. If you on the couch, you ain't got shit going on, you trying to figure out life, everybody fall back on fucked up moments in life. But what you telling me right now, I could be on the couch, and all I need is my motherfucking phone. And I can get busy. All you need is your phone. That's why. I, that's that's literally why I teach this because I'm so passionate. Like you're right. I thought ball was gonna be my way out, yeah. but this is my way out now. Yeah. You don't need to have a college degree. You don't need a diploma. You all you need is just to get out there, get your phone, and know how to apply for certain credit cards, how to find these facilities, put the work in, and you'll be up every day. Million. You said something about the SBA, right? Yeah. Small business associate. What was that thing you said they got to, to deal specifically with storage units? So it's a seven A loan. Seven okay. eight. So with that loan, they give you ninety percent financing only for self storage, only for self storage. So All you gotta do is put up ten percent. Tap in, man. Get this game, man. What's the number, Wallow? Yeah. The number is three four seven four two nine sixty four ninety six. Three four seven four two nine sixty four ninety six. Text you need game. To Text game right now. G A M E for you niggas can spell. And I want to say something. I want you to. I want you to tell our audience something. Yeah, yeah. For those that was in your situation, you was a a, a journey's man basketball player trying to mm -hmm. figure it out. Turn, you know, he, you know, he said, I, I got cut from JV. That's Damn, bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's that's lowest of the low. Yeah. Listen, listen. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> if, if a person out there shit is not going on, they trying to figure out what, what words can you get them to motivate them? You know what I mean? What words can you get that person out there just to motivate them? Listen, man, um, the most powerful thing in the world is a made up mind. That's it. You got to make that decision. A lot of people be motivated. They'll watch this episode and be like, damn, he gave you mad game. Be motivated, but they won't even text game to the link. Mm. Right? Mm. You got to be committed. That's all I tell all my students. I say, listen, we got to be committed to the process. We can't be motivated one day. We got to make sure that the same motivation you had when you first heard it is the same feeling you carry through when it's not working out or when things is hard. So just really make up your mind. That's the most powerful thing in the world. I made the decision. I said, listen, there's no way I'm going to die broke. It ain't, no, it ain't no way in hell we was born to literally go through poverty, 
go to school, get a job, be in debt, die 30 years with a pension, and then our health is neglected because we was chasing, paying off debt. Like, that's not life. It's definitely not. That ain't life. life. Yeah, you know I mean? Thank so you. That is not life. On. That's what we on. So listen, man. Right now, once again, man, to get this free course, what I need you to do is text GAME to 347-429-6496. Mill, mill, a mailbox millionaire, Academy Young Mobile. We appreciate having you. Listen, that was another, I'm talking about another edition of a powerful young game. Mogul. I'm talking about game feel. From a young student. And what's so impressive for me is a young one that's doing it. He young out here with a shitload of money, a shitload of assets making it happen. You could do it too. Let me ask you just before you get out of you only you you young man. Who's some of the niggas that inspired you to be like this, man? Oh man, my big bro, uh, Marcus, him five hundred. He okay. tapped in here. Listen, just see, just seeing a black man again coming from the bottom, being able to make millions in. Business. That nigga got a jet, man. And he got, I ain't. In business, niggas got jets. We ain't man. the rappers. We ain't we ain't ball players. So those, those that's 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 mentors of mine. And niggas got jets. Yeah. But, but let, let me add this on here, right? This is what I did too, because a lot of people they be saying what they do and they really don't know what they don't do what they do, right? Mm. I executive produced the movie, so mm. I got a movie that is in theaters where I literally show you the day in the life of me going out there buying properties, working with my contractors, being able to go and buy storage facilities, so that. That person that's in the street and they see in this episode, they like, ah, oh, it sound good. Well, oh, tap nigga, in, I'll show you, tap nigga. in. We got a movie that show you real life, and now you can go out there and do the exact same thing. Believe All right, that. man, listen, this is another 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 episode of Me and I was Perfect Game, Business Spotlight. Like I said, text the number, get the free course, get some game, and it's just like that. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter. According to the latest research, 90% of employees plan to make enhancing their employee experience top priority in 2022. After all, a happy workplace is the key to attracting and keeping great employees. And if you need to add more employees to your team, Zip Recruiter. The matching technology helps you find the right people for your roles fast and right now. And you can try Zip Recruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash game. Zip Recruiter uses a powerful technology to find and match the right candidates for your job. Then it proactively presents these candidates to you. You can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. Zip Recruiter technology is also a Effective in four out of five employers who post on Zip Recruiter gets a quality candidate within the first 24 hours. So, uh, you know, if you need the best employees for your company, Zip Recruiter is where it's at. To find the right employees for your workplace, Zip Recruiter. Try it for free at an exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash game. G A M E. That's ziprecruiter.com slash game. The smartest way to hire, right now. Uh, how 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 was things looking for you, man? You know, you don't got to get into no particulars, but how was things mm -hmm. looking for you, like with your freedom and just fighting? You know, you know, uh, you know. I've been through man, the process. Like, how was things, man? For the most part, man, my case is great, and this is why the district attorney has been scared to go to trial. Me and my lawyer has been prepared to go to trial since June 2017, and you know we've ne always been ready. So you know, the hold up is like you know it's a whole bunch of fuckery. You know what I mean? So. You know, the, 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 the person is the opposite, the opposite of my case. He has to, like, paint this picture so he could go free for some gun charges he got because me and that dude don't even have the same charges. But he just, for interviews, trying to tell people, what am I supposed to do if they're trying to charge me with killing my friend? That nigga ain't even charged with that. So I don't even know what the fuck he talking about. The nigga's charged with bringing three guns to the club. That's what he got caught with. You know what I mean? So like my situation is like it's 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 not a hard situation, it's just a hard charge. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if anybody knows anything about law, they need you you could be anything by reasonable doubt, you know what I mean, with these kinds of cases. And it's too much of it. You know, you got people that's been painting a narrative that I came to kill them for years. And then you got the dude's brother on the on, on Clubhouse talking about, yeah, we knew he was there and we wasn't ducking no smoke, so we came to see him. You know what I mean? Like, so now this takes away your story of a motive that I came to kill you. You actually came to do some shit to me. Mm -hmm. 
So it's, this is what I don't understand about the industry and what a lot of people, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I helped start drink champs, you know what I mean? Nori was, Nori's a good friend of mine, you know what I mean? I really, and I, he, he interviewed the dude. I didn't care about him interviewing him. I cared about what he allowed that nigga to say on his show. You know what I mean? If you were interviewer, you were you a journalist now, or you interview people, whatever. But when you got somebody on your show saying that I'm a murderer and I did this and I did that, and the shit ain't even true, that's the sad shit. You know what I mean? It's certain people that was there that understand, and it's like, come on, you gave this dude a narrative to call me a murderer on a huge platform, and this is a platform that I helped start. That shit hurt my feelings, and it really didn't hurt my feelings when it first happened because I was already desensitized to like all of the. Shit the industry niggas do. So when it first happened, I wasn't even mad. It took me almost a year to get mad. It took me almost a year. Like, it was just a, like, I don't know what point it hit me. And then I was like, damn, Nori. Because the same way I told you I'm going to run up on an artist I like, that's the same way I met Nori. I met Nori at MTV in the lobby. I said, yo, N-R-E, Nori, stand for niggas on the run eating. You my nigga. What's up? Mm-hmm. I'm running down on niggas when I fuck with them. If I'm a fan of you, I got no problem saying I'm a fan of you. You know what I mean? So that's how I met him. So the day I met him, we kicking it. He like, yo, tax, I heard your name somewhere before. So I'm like, I don't know. Then the nigga came back 20 minutes later. Ask Charlemagne this story. He showed me a text from Rosenberg that said, yo, do you got anybody from your belt gang that could tighten this kid tax stone up? He's being a thorn in my side. Dang. I said, what? <laughs> Rosenberg just tried to put a hit on me? You're supposed to be the cool radio dude. I'm supposed to be the ignorant street dude. I don't even do shit like that. And I said this shit on the show, and then Rosenberg put me on radio talking about, um, you played yourself segment and shit on the radio and called me a liar and said that Nori was lying. But I'm telling y'all right now, y'all can ask Charlemagne and he's going to tell you what the text said because he read it. So it's like, it's certain things that go on in the industry, and I'm not even going to say industry, I'm going to say in the world, because the industry ain't no different from the streets. It's the same type of fucking characters. It's just more squares controlling it. Mm-hmm. So when when it happened, I was like, damn, bro. Like, Nori, you like, you threw me under the bus in every way. You called me a liar just now. Then you brought somebody on your show that's calling me a killer. You know what I mean? And for Nori to be a dude that was from the streets that had cases up the Hot 97, Foxy and Tim and them, I just didn't expect that from him. You know what I mean? It was a weird situation. And I, I, I actually forgive him today because I don't I don't hold on to shit for too long. You know what I mean? Well, you need I to, forget the nigga. Did y'all talk? Mm-hmm. Y'all, y- y'all can have a talk? Yeah, I think you should talk to him. You nah, I, I am I am going to talk to him and I feel like talking to him, no. I ain't going to lie. I ain't in that space yet. So I don't feel like screaming to no shit. You know what I mean? I'd rather have a real civilized conversation with him because I really ain't got no hatred in my heart for the nigga. You know what I mean? I wish the nigga the best. But it's just that, like, I just feel like, yo, when you in your grave, when you sitting in jail, people will just piss on your grave. And won't nobody throw no flowers. Like, I'm sitting here like, yo, bro, I helped you. I sat up day after day with Nori. I'm talking about getting them lawyers, all kinds of shit for the podcast. We discussing everything down to the gristle. Like, this ain't even no joke. Like, I was more invested in drink champs than I was invested with you because I was in prison when I first hollered at you and I just hooked you up with the people to help you. You know what I mean? Yeah. With him, it was like hands-on situation. That's why it's like, I think the first or second episode, me and Charlemagne is on drink champs. And then I'm on another episode a year later. You know what I mean? So it's like, that was the only thing that like really hurt me as far as like a relationship in the industry because it was like, damn, bro, like this dude is trying to keep me in jail because of the shit he got caught with. You got caught and now you want to keep me in jail. You understand? Tax Stone went to jail eight months later after this crime took place. I think uh... I went to jail because of them. These niggas trying to make it seem, this is my thing, these bloggers, academics, all of them. Like, why do they just post anything without being true or like, like that's not funny. And what's not even more funny is you talking about an open case, creating a narrative because now look at El Chapo case. The judge told the, the jurors to not look up El Chapo when they go back to their hotel room. Humans are going to Google a nigga. A human might Google you while you in the supermarket. So the, they go and Google the nigga, and now El Chapo's about to get a reversal because they went against the judge's rules. So my point is, is this. 
You just gave this dude a platform to say I'm a murderer on a huge platform. So now if a juror decides to go watch, go look our case up, he go look to Drink Champs and says, oh, well, he said that he was a murderer on Drink Champs. That's all I seen because some of those jurors don't even have fucking common sense. Some of them not even pay attention to the case. Some of them are just going to sleep and most jurors don't want to be there. So for you to paint a narrative that I'm a fucking killer or a murderer, that shit is fucking horrible, nigga. That's horrible. I would never do that to nobody. So that's like the only thing that like really hurt me as far as like industry relationships. You know what I mean? I understand everything else. I just want to say this too. You know, sometimes as you know, what what, what do we consider? Because I don't know what the fuck we consider. We considered media. Journalists, I don't know. Journal, I don't yeah, know. media I just, journalists. I just figured we just us, you know yeah, what I mean? Buddy. So, But sometimes I guess when you in media, you know, you know, motherfuckers be chasing the best story. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes people get caught up in, you know, getting the best stories, getting the best clippings, getting the best, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And and I don't really think, I don't really think up until this time, you know, Nori was looking at it like that. I think if y'all have a talk, I think Nori yeah. would, a stand up would be a stand up man, and apologize. Man. You know what I'm saying and all that because sometimes you get caught up in this shit. Because man, you, listen, I mean, I know that's what happened, bro. Yeah. I know that is. That's why I don't, I'm not mad at him because I know he didn't do it out of malicious intent. No, I know he no. was chasing no. numbers. Right. He, I know he was chasing numbers. You know what I mean? I know. You know why? Because I studied it before I ever said anything. I said, let me go back and look at his last couple episodes. And then I went and looked around and I seen what was going on. I said, oh, my God. What happened was this. Joe Button was making too much fucking noise and he needed to do something. That's what happened. It was that simple. It was that simple. Nigga was chasing some numbers. But in the point of you chasing some numbers, you hurt your friend. You hurt your colleague. You know what I mean? You hurt your comrade. So, you know, it is what it is. I ain't tripping. I've been hurt before. Tom Hill all wounds. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's all about a conversation as men. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at man, the end I of the day, I'm going to just say, if I, if I fuck with a nigga, you feel what I'm saying? And I express that you did some dumb shit. You feel what I'm saying? And I break everything down. And, and it's, you know, there's no way you could get out of, okay, yeah, I did some dumb shit. I give uh, Wallow will tell you. I always give a motherfucker an opportunity to to stand up as a man, because anytime I do some dumb shit, I come back and be like, "Damn, dog, my fault, man." You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. I was a little hot. I said some shit out of anger. My fault. I'm gonna mm-hmm. apologize to you as a man because I fuck with you. I want I want to reiterate that I fuck with you. I don't mm-hmm. fuck with too many niggas, but I fuck with you. So I was out of pocket. I always give a nigga an opportunity to uh, allow himself to be a man. Then if you yeah. can't if you can't be a man, then it's fuck you from here on out. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if I say I fuck with a nigga, and you say you fuck with me, we may not always agree. We might have disagreements. Yeah. We might have arguments. Every rule, every motherfucking day ain't always yeah, smooth. Arguments, yeah. You feel me? We might yeah. have some disagreements. We might have some arguments. You might point out some shit and all, but nigga, you said this and all. You know what? You right, my nigga. You one hundred percent right, but we we men. That's why fault. we can get I over. We're not women, right. right? You feel what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not acting out off of emotion. You feel what I'm saying? When it's niggas that I genuinely love, I because I'm a nigga that value relationships. So I always give a nigga a chance to be a man about this shit. Then if you yeah. can't be a man, if you can't look yourself in the mirror when ain't nobody around and be like, "Damn, I was wrong," then you ain't no mm-hmm. fucking man. Yeah, and 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 and, and real nigga shit is seeing when you fuck with two different people, good dudes that you had good, you had good situations with. I respect you. I respect Noi. You be wanting to see, you know. What I mean, that's why I said I hope y'all talking y'all bush name because ain't no real real motherfucker want to see two good motherfuckers that always been good to them go through some shit when it could be conversations. Yeah. So I just hope y'all had that. But I want to ask you. Nah, man, I'm going to have that combo with him. Yeah. Like I told you, it's just, it's just me. I'm still, you don't understand. I'm in jail right now. Right. I'm, I'm better that I'm being attacked and I can't even protect myself, you heard? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the weirdest feeling for people to be coming at you all day and your lawyer like, yo, be quiet. Mm-hmm. Chill. And you just getting attacked. And you know a lie told a thousand times becomes the truth. Yeah. So it's like you letting the fucking coward nigga just lie everywhere he fucking go. You know what I mean? Like just promoting propaganda to try to make it seem like everything this nigga says is a fucking lie. Like everything. He talking about he lost his kids because of the shit. You lost your kid before that shit happened. 
And I could prove it. Like everything that the nigga say is fucking false. He lost a million dollars. Where? Where is that? We all getting sued. Where the million at? Like, come on. Like, it's like so, so much dumb shit that these people allow people to say. And that's why I was happy when I had a voice out there because every time a nigga lied, I was there to correct his ass. I remember when Funk Flex said, I'm number one on radio. I got to put the BDS up. No, you're not. Clue got that time slot. Why you lying, Flex? Oh, I'm going to drop the Drake and Quentin Miller record later on tonight. Boom. No, you're not. Flex is lying. He's trying to get y'all to just listen to the show. Did the show drop later on that night? He plays no record. I'm just there to tell the truth, nigga. I have the niggas in New York don't even like me because I'm going to tell their truth. See, they could tell my truth, and I'll tell it with them. I have no problem with my truth, but they got a problem with their truth. I'm so they got a problem with me. I'm going to ask you a question, right? Now, yeah. and I don't want you to be biased, right? Now, mm-hmm. one of my favorite songs when I was in jail was uh, Joe Buttons when he came out with the Pump Me Up song. That joint was popping. Dan it, Dan it. And I told Gil, I told Gil, you ain't got no song that's better than that. Am I lying? <laughs> now, now, is you going to rock with Joe Buttons or not? Joe, Joe's song was way better than this nigga. I'll be arguing right. with it. Tell the truth. Listen, that was biggest listen. biggest song than Gil. Ain't never had no fucking song that big, man. Nah, Gil ain't ever song bigger than Pump It Up. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pump it up. Still trash. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That it's wasn't trash. trash. Good record. Good boy. Like, I'm I, sure he don't like performing that. But you think Joe don't like performing that? Yeah, I know he don't. That was a big record. That get the club jumping. I knew it was, and I was in jail, but I knew the club be jumping. I don't give a fuck with nobody. <laughs> well, because you, yeah, that's cause, all cause, listen, it listen, because because when he used to, you know, Joe Buttons is a better listen, rapper than listen, Gilly. No, listen, he used to have club wallows up, up up at Gratis Foot and shit, and that used to be the song that had the motherfucking prison going crazy. Pump, 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 that pump it up. Bow, that down, bow, down, bow, down, bow. Bow. What I'm doing, stacking figures. What you doing, kissing niggas? Is better than pump it up. Who whose song is that? That's Gilly. That book. Shoot. Yo, see Gilly that, that whole text. Text, text, text. text. You, you better not be no motherfucker. No, text. You better not be no Gilly the Kid groupie, man. I ain't feeling this shit, man, because you already gave me yeah. props at the beginning. Listen, talking about this nigga, you was a I fan of his shit. It's not not to do, my nigga. It's not not to do. I can't act like I wasn't. Come on, I ain't man. One of them Fuck is you talk. I was talking that shit, nigga. I look at us and look at y'all. The oh. poor sight of the Lord Knights <laughs> limiting the hordes tight. That ain't what the hordes <laughs> like. Right. Hey, what the hordes like? Hey, listen, listen, listen. Hey, hey, listen. Fuckers, you listen, listen. About, you know what's crazy? No, nigga, this 1999. I call this nigga. Listen, they listen, listen, listen. I ain't writing listen. a check. I come in Black the studio, the right? Philly game. Jewelry light up the vet. Listen, I come in the Fuckers studio. you talking about, nigga? I come in the studio I'm like a couple months ago, shit, right? Nigga. I come in the studio a couple months ago. Now, you know Gil, little old nigga. This nigga passed out on the couch. A bunch of Coors Light cans all crushed. I'm like, this nigga was passed out. This nigga's off and everything. This nigga out here drinking Coors Light, man. This nigga's old. He lied. He's a nut ass nigga. Man. This nigga's a nut ass nigga, man. I'm telling you, man. He's a nut. All right, now, now I know you can hear music in there. Like, what New York rappers you popping? You know, you you, you listening to, man? Because they got a lot of young um, cats, that's, you know, doing anything. Yeah, I like I like I like Fabio. I like Fabio. I think he got good energy. You know what I mean? Um, when I first heard him, I was like, "What the fuck is this, man? His kid ain't saying nothing." But after a minute, I said, "This shit is some beautiful energy." Okay, okay. So who who I else like you like? Fabio. I like little TJ. I like little oh, TJ yeah, I like a motherfucker. Me. I fucks with TJ. Who else? Um, it's probably some more. I just can't think of it. All right, well, what about the industry? Who are you listening to in the industry? Rap is in the industry. Um, in the industry, I'm definitely you. listening to Dirk right now because I never used to listen to Dirk. What? And all my little niggas used to always try to put me on the Dirk and I'd be like, man, fuck out of here. Come on, man. But I heard a song by mistake one day and I said, this little nigga is talking some oh, shit. Oh, you fucking tripping, man. <laughs> you tripping, about. man. These Look. niggas act like they don't need us. Yo, they do Dirk everything we do. Shit. They want to be us. Yeah, Gil is Dirk, our biggest groupie. Ecstasy, they oh, to yeah, yo, up. he's the biggest Dirk groupie. Everybody I'm in the world know that. See, so you ain't out here. Everybody up. in the world know that. No, like, if you, you just go, if you Google, if shit a nigga Google Dirk, biggest groupie, Dirk fanboy, <laughs> Gil gonna pop up. I used to draw the name on the So one day we in an argument, right? Me and him in an argument. He want to argue with me. He want to argue me about Dirk and back in the day hip hop. I'm like, Dirk ain't never, Dirk ain't never get me no grinds and no motherfucking dollar parties. I fucks with Dirk. That's my that's that's nephew. But he I, I think he said some shit like, Yeah, Dirk better than Chuck D. I said, hold the hold the fuck up. I said, hold the fuck up. I said, hold the fuck up, nigga. You know how many motherfucking you know how many times I grind on girls with a Terminator X? I'm all in the dollar party, all like this. I ain't never do that off no fucking Dirk. Dirk, Dirk, listen, that's nephew. I'm just listen, saying. Chuck D was nice. He but won't you disrespect know me. Ch- I, I, 
I wasn't in no party. Yes. How low can we go? F bro. You know that shit. Well, I'm going to go once again because you used to throw that shit on religion. You know that listen to the dollar party. You remember the dollar party tax? You all up in here. Folks, my friends got their boxes and the gun is on. Him and them because they really never had a gun. The word to determine that the hex boy used to be in a losing his mind. I was ready to sucker punch that nigga. You know what I was playing, nigga. Listen, I was ready to sucker punch that nigga. I'm a nigga. He's a nigga. She's a nigga. We's a nigga. Would you like to be a nigga too? That nigga disrespect. You know what I was playing. Listen, well, he's straight out of Compton. Crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube from a game called Yo, Niggas Weird Attitudes. And when up. I called off, I got a sword off. I squeezed the trigger and bodies all hurled off. You two. Listen, listen, yeah, who, he, was I listening yeah, to who? Yeah, he was listening to Ice T. That's my nigga. That, that's my nigga. He was listening. Go ahead, go ahead, get your shit off. Get your shit off. Speed of life. Fast. Mm, mm, it's like walking barefoot over broken glass. Mm, it's like jumping rope. <laughs> it's like jumping rope on a razor blade. All lightning quick. Decisions are made. Mm. Listen, don't make me go crazy, man. Uh-huh. He was I a remember, fuck. He I was remember a- Ice T said on on Twitter something about Soldier Boy being a whack rapper, and I'm like, nigga, you was a whack rapper too. You fucking crazy. Fuck is you talking that about? Nigga that nigga, you, you crazy, Tex. Ice T's a fucking legend. That Ice T is a legend. When Ron he Pace come. When Ron Pace came out, that six in the morning police at my door. Listen, that nigga was cold as ice. That nigga was talking that shit. Listen, he was talking some shit, right? But we don't really remember Ice T's lyrics. He had nothing that stood out. I just did. I just rapped. The fuck is you talking about? I'm he from the East Coast. It's only you. It's only you. Two niggas from Jersey and a nigga from Cali to know that verse. Mm. This niggas though, you a listen. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this. You talk a lot of shit. You talk a lot of shit with your hands. I, listen, I'm gonna snuff you when you this get out of jail, man. Cool. I'm gonna sucker punch you, man. I'm sucker punching you, tax. You, you and this nigga keep disrespecting old rappers, man. Stop that shit, man. No, 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 no. I don't disrespect no old rappers. You told me you disrespect the Chuck D. You fucking disrespect the Chuck D. For dirt, pussy. No, I'm just you disrespect the Chuck D. For dirt. You just don't respect the young rappers. I do. You don't respect the young rappers. You just a fucking you. He was just a young rapper. You want to argue? You with me, well, all the, all the niggas beats sound like this. Boom, boom, tat, boom, 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 tat, boom, boom, tat. No, nigga, this is fucking 2022. I want to hear more than a fucking drum and I gotta, a snare. I, listen, listen, nigga. I feel as though, listen, on some real shit, I feel as though. You know what old school shit I've been listening to lately? What, John? Who? Father, Father MC. Father MC was cold, man. He was nice, man. That nigga was cold as shit. But, but how you gonna say Father MC was cold and then you gonna try to rank IC? That nigga wasn't better than Father IC. MC. I'm gonna just IC. tell you something. <laughs> I'ma just tell you something. Fuck is you talking about? Yeah, he yeah. wasn't better than Ice. Yeah, that nigga OPP man, out of pocket player. Yeah, you out of pocket like a pistol. No, he's a robbery, five MC. Man. The fuck is you talking father about? A five MC, MC man. Nigga, watch five MC was fire. No, yo, 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 fucking god. Pop, god. Yeah. You, you, you know who was hot? You know who was hot? Motherfucker, a lot of niggas, niggas, a lot of man. niggas be sleeping on Benzino man. He with the Mighty RS posse. I'm with Mighty RS. What? What'd you say? Come on. The war is on. You don't remember he had the song The War is On off the fucking one soundtrack? The War is On. I'm tired of waiting. Let's get it on. I think it was him and Mob Deep. Like that nigga, Benzino. I don't remember one Benzino song. What about, I remember him being staticky. I don't remember no songs from that nigga. What about, what about you, you, you remember the, uh, the, uh, the Boogie Monsters in New York? You remember them? That's a fact. What yeah. about, you, I know you down with the, I, listen, shout out to Grand Pooh, but you a legend. My nigga, Grand Poob is a fucking yeah, legend. Poobie. Brand Nubian. Uh, the Arch- Boogie you remember Archie Magnetic make, MCs, right? The Boogie right? Monsters of New York. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Boogie Monsters. Honey Dips and Gotham. Honey Yo, Dips and Gotham. No, 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 I'm just saying I'm a hip-hop historian. You know that. That's, that's, <laughs> listen, you remember that Archie Magnetic? That nigga Cool Keith told them niggas, I'm the best MC in the whole wide world, and ain't nobody say nothing to him. Nobody said nothing to this nigga. You couldn't have said that shit in your time. They'd have cooked you. That nigga said, I'm the best MC in the Man, whole wide world. Thing. A oh, fucking cool Keith, use a legend if you out there, legend. Dr. Octopus. Use a, what? Oh, man, use a fucking nut ass nigga tax. You said cool Keith was trash? That I don't nigga told know these niggas. I'm not, I'm not, no disrespect, but you know, I don't even know these niggas, man. I can't deal with this shit. You know, I ain't grow up I rapping, nigga. Shout out to Black Moon. Shout out to the Black Moon. See, the difference between, between us, he grew up idolizing rappers. I didn't. I didn't you know You idolized Dirk? No, basketball Dirk, players. No, you idolized Dirk. I wanted to be, I you, wanted to you be Mike, You Dirk biggest groupie. Google Dirk biggest groupie. Gil name gonna pop up. All right, stop playing Dirk biggest groupie. You just mad, nigga. You just mad. I don't respond for shit 
with Vaughn. You talking no, no, that shit? You know what happened? Go get on ain't your love. love. On ain't your love. I'm gonna say some shit. Listen, I ain't, he ain't think I was gonna say it. He ain't gonna you think I was saying it. That shit. <laughs> the fans. I'm telling you right come. now. Listen. You, you know what this nigga done? Gilly, I'm hitting your bun. Listen. You keep on playing. Listen. I'm getting you done. Listen, the goofy ass nigga. He's a groupie. Nigga, he's a fucking groupie. You ain't the one. He's a groupie. Listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna tell you some shit. This nigga did. This nigga did some nut ass shit. When we go, we go to interview Dirk. You know what this nigga said? Yeah, man, I had to bless you, youngin. I got something for you. You know this nigga gave Dirk some Murray's griefs for his for his plats and shit, man. Get the fuck he out of here. He told me, man, this for you, man. I'm gonna look out for you. Like a motherfucker. He gave that nigga some Murray's griefs for his plats, man. I gotta make sure you shine, a young boy, nephew. You my, you my biggest artist and all this shit. That nigga's a fucking mill. He's a listen. He's a fanboy. That nigga's a Dirk fanboy, man. He gets the fuck out of here, man. You be hating, man. No, I, 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 that's my nephew. I just want to tell you this. But you be trying to disrespect yesterday. No, You're not no, disrespecting yesterday. I just right. want to tell y'all fuck one. That. I'm gonna tell these niggas one thing. Cause the difference is my bitch bad and she killing it. Oh. And cause the difference is she don't put them bitches in our business still. Oh. Uh, listen, 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 listen. You hear that shit? You hear oh that yeah, shit? that's right. We Boom. love all the niggas Here we that go. rap like this. Here we go. That was some real right. Shout out to Ice T, New Jack Hustler. Nino, you know what I mean? That was the um, the uh, 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 New Jack City soundtrack. He was a legend. I had to throw that out there, man. I mean, real rap. Real rap still exists. Like, mm. you know what I mean? All the niggas sampling that shit from back in the day. Mm. All the Metro booming and all them, man. Me and Metro was talking. You see, we did the sample right there real live and real time. Shout out to Metro booming. But shout out to Gangstar. I mean, rest in peace to Guru, man. Premier, you still That's out here doing right. your thing. Buckshot. Brent, listen, come on, shout man. Out to, uh, hey, all you want to do Black is Moon. always get on these shows to shout out motherfucking 50 and 60 year old rappers, nah, Black man. Moon shout out to them niggas, YZ. man. Shout fuck out that to Throwback listen, Thursday my nigga shit, Wise, man. Wise shout out to ESTG. Yo, shout out to 42 Doug. Dog, body, nigga. What the you fuck is that? Let me tell you something. I was working, nigga. Listen, third eye. 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 He wanted to be heavy D dick holster growing up. Shout out to the artifacts. Heavy D, can I just be a dick holster? Hawk, I see you up there in Jersey doing your thing. You throwing, Shout out man. to uh, he uh the hey, far listen. side. Hi hieroglyphics on the West Coast. Peace, Razz Kaz. Yeah, you know right. I'm a hip-hop story, hey, don't you? Hey, rest in peace, Heavy D. He walked up on Heavy D. He walked up on Heavy D as a young boy. Said, can I be your dick hoster when you go on tour? Niggas enough. Yeah. Anytime you, anytime yeah, you got some bitches in the room, I, I pull your dick out. The for fat you. boys, shout out to them, man. Slick Rick, everybody, shout man. Bro, fat boys. come we on, man. Hey, let, let me tell y'all something, man. Come on with that shit, both of y'all, man. With that old ass shit, man. He's another fuck ass y'all talking about, man? This nigga's another ass nigga. Fuck is wrong with yeah, y'all. He mad, he no, mad. Hold on, fuck, oh, 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 man. Fuck all that, man. Shout out to motherfucker Lil Dirk, man. Shout out to ESTG. Shout out to them, no, man. man. Shut, shut up, nigga. You did that already, nigga. Shout out to 21 Damn. Savage, motherfucking Young Thug, the baby, motherfucking Lil Baby, Mac and Cheese, Ice Weird Vezo, Peasy, Lil Yachty, Babyface Ray. PNB Rock, Zaz Sosa. Motherfucking PNB Rock, Meek Mill. Lil Uzi. Motherfucking Lil Uzi. Tough Crew, EST. What the fuck is you talking about, man? Cool. Why Stop I'm, throwing them niggas up in here. You already you, said them old Philly. niggas, man. You said Philly. Fucking you turned us to this old ass Yo, place. Cash this, money. This, this, uh, DJ Cash McKev. Uh, uh, DJ Ran. Yeah, we can uh, shout the DJs out because they still Jeff. hold the young Whoa, niggas. Fresh Prince. Fresh, Fresh Prince and Jazzy. I'm going to tell you this one time, nigga. What? I told you we not no Throwback Thursday podcast, man. I got to throw them niggas out there. Fuck them niggas, man. They time came and went, man. Shout out to them. But we, nigga, we represent the niggas that own tomorrow, man. Hold up. He got who? Shout out who? I said I wanted to shout out Nipsey too because when you was talking That's about artists, Nipsey. I was dealing with. Rest in peace, like, to Nipsey, rest in peace, man. Nipsey. Rest that in peace, to Nip, Draco, man. man. The last time I spoke to that kid, that nigga picked up the phone. Right, I was in the feds. He said, "Yo, what's good, bro?" I said, "Ain't shit. Just checking on you." He was like, "He was like, yo, let's talk real fast. We got three minutes. I'm about to get on stage." You heard? That nigga went on stage. I think like maybe five days later, I got a book from him. Ag Gaston, the first black millionaire. Mm -hmm. The day I got that book, the CEO pulled up on me maybe two hours later and said, yo, you listening to the radio? I'm like, nah. He said, yo, they just said Nipsey Hussle got killed in L.A. I'm like, nigga, what? Damn. I that was in the fucking box, my nigga. When I tell you that shit broke my heart, nigga. Damn, that's because crazy, man. Rest I would peace call to that Nip. nigga all the time and that motherfucker would pick up. He didn't give a fuck what he was doing. That nigga, he would pick up for 10 seconds, nigga. I'm about to get in the shower. What's good, cuz? You need something? You know what I mean? 
And it was it was that little shit right there that made me stop fucking with a lot of people that I was fucking with in the street. Cause I would call niggas and they was always busy. And I said, damn, if I know this nigga Nipsey Hustle got a fucking craziest schedule than all y'all niggas, how the fuck he always yeah. picking up? Right. That's real. Rest you know in peace to Nip. Nip was a real Rest motherfucker, peace, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, you know I mean the marathon continues, man. But uh, like I told you and Wallow, man, shout out to them old old heads. Shout out to niggas that did it. But this ain't that platform, man. Fuck is you talking about, man? We represent the niggas that own tomorrow, man. Stop that dumb ass shit. You want to keep getting on here. Shout out to motherfucking. Shout out to Grand G and all these niggas that got letters in their names and all that shit, man. Come on, man. For real, man. A child is born with no state of mind. Blind to the way of mankind. Had to throw that oh, out there. Shout out to Rowdy Rebel too. Rowdy Rebel rapping his ass off. Yeah, yeah, right. Let me Rebel. tell you something. Let me tell you something, Tex. You know why? You know why he a hip hop historian? Cause they was the niggas that was popping when he went to fuck the jail. So they was the last they was the last no, niggas was on his fucking no, mind. Wasn't. You ain't heard you ain't heard special ed and all this dumb ass. I got it shit. made. Fuck is wrong with Shout out to P Rock. P Rock and CL Smooth, man. Listen, if they do it, I'm telling you, one of my goals is Shout to host. Shout out to Pete Rock and CL Smooth. I got all the love for all the I'm OGs. Saying, shout out to DJ Kid Capri. Got I'm an take, album out, man. I gotta take go, a picture with all the niggas, man. I got shout out with all of but come on, bro. Kid and play. I just seen Kid at the airport today. When we landed, I ain't, ain't seen him. Why you ain't fucking tell me? I just seen kid today. What? Why you ain't tell me, nigga? What I the fuck was you said, on? That's, a, that's crazy. That's the t- he's tax. This is the type of hating shit he do. How the fuck you don't tell me you seen him? Because I didn't want you in the airport doing the dance with him. <laughs> he's a nut ass nigga, man. See, this is the type of hating shit like that. I'd have had him down in the. You would have been right, nigga. I'd have got a picture with the nigga. Let me just do it. Somebody recorded. Just this. Yeah, I would ask. I, I dreamed about dance. this in prison, man. All that I'd dumb ask ass shit, dance. man. That's my nigga, man. Ain't got no time for that shit. Hey, tax. Yo, yeah, text, folk, listen, text. Yo, yo, let me ask y'all something because y'all some Philly niggas. Where is Strings at? Who? Strings. Who the fuck is Strings? I think she y'all from Chicago. Y'all remember Strings, the rapper chick? She, she from, from Chicago. Chicago. Well, I thought that bitch was from Philly. Man, he's still in jail jerking off off Strings, man. Yeah, you good at the fuck out. Yeah, I was. I just seen a picture of her recently. I just jerked off to her. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, but let me just tell you something. Is you going to be jerking off when you come home? Because this nigga came home and still was going busy. He yeah, still was going busy. I jerk off while I'm in the bed with my wife. She wake oh up and catch me all the time. Oh <laughs> Yo, I used God. to get caught too. This, this nigga story. freaky ass nigga, man. This another story. How you jerk off in jail and come home and jerk off, man? The way you hit it, the way you hit it, gotta it get you horny again. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Y'all niggas is, yeah. This nigga came home for his first year. He 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 told me because I'm I'm just concentrating on my money. I'm yeah, I was. Man. Uh, he told me I'm already used to it. So what? What the fuck are you talking about, man? You better get some pussy, man. You been out for nigga. This nigga's a hater. Nigga tax. was out for forty days. Had one bitch. Yeah, man. I you know I slide down on her a couple times because I just wake up. I tap myself out when I go do my videos. Man, sell my t-shirt. Yeah. Nigga, what? You tap yourself out? Fuck are you talking about? I, ne- I never seen a motherfucking MMA nigga put himself in the headlock and tap himself. I, I don't want to fight no more. He's a nut ass nigga, man. Yeah. But tax, we got a we got a segment called Stories from the Cell, right? Yeah, hold up. Stories from the Cell. Right? Mm-hmm. And you wanna explain because this is your segment. Let, let me what is a wild moment that you experience in jail, man? Like some crazy funny shit. Did, did anybody put anything on your bed? Uh watch your watch your laundry for, for no reason, uh clean your cell when you was at the gym. Did any crazy shit happen to you, man? Like what give us a crazy story of some wild shit that happened to you since you've been in the can. Oh man, where the fuck do I start, man? Um we was in a shower, showering, a whole bunch of Supposed gangsters, you know, it's about it's about um maybe fourteen stalls, and half of the bubble is in the shower. So when the the COs that was outside the shower started screaming, so we looked in the direction they was looking, and a nigga was fucking a nigga in the shower right underneath the the bubble window. So oh one of the dudes that was in the shower threw a bar of soap at the nigga. The shit hit him in the back of the neck. The nigga ain't even stopped fucking. He was so horny, he just kept going, bro. Oh, my God. 
Niggas tried to drag the nigga off the nigga. He still was fucking. The nigga was humping while he was on the floor. He wasn't even attached to the nigga no more. Uh, he was just uh, air humping like uh, 40 uh, dogs. Hey, tax, tax, it's cool. This nigga's having flashbacks. Tax, 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 tax. He said tax. This nigga's having flashbacks. Tax, fuck it. This is the craziest story for this I ever heard in my life. This nigga's here having flashbacks. He's sweating. That's what I'm saying. He talking. This nigga screaming, get him off me. This nigga is screaming, get him off me and all this shit. Tax, he said, listen. This is wild. He went to a hole. He started shaking and shit. Tax, we listen. Yo, stupid. Now you know you done fucked up, right? <laughs> yeah, hey. but that's what's going on. Hey, so hey. You- and that was stories from the cell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was the craziest stories from the cell I ever, ever heard. Ever. Like, God damn. God damn. They different in the New York don't, jails, man. Listen, don't ever ask me no shit. Yeah, that shit happened upstate in Elmira Correctional Facility. Damn. That's crazy, man. I don't want to hear no more of that shit. Right. They, <laughs> and then, it, then, it, then he ain't even finished the story. Yeah, they took they took twenty minutes to get me off him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was rough. I ain't want to get up off him, but it, uh, you know, Yo, I was in the hole. That's why he's in the hole. That nigga, that nigga, that's why I was in the hole. Like, that, 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 yeah, that was why I'm in the box. He like, he like, he like they, they pulled him off. He was still going. He, man, Yo, I was, I was strong as shit at that time. That's what I was. That's when I was working out a lot. He strong It was hard for them to pull me off of him. Don't tell nobody my business though. They was calling me. They was calling me. They was calling me tax tone. Break your back, bo. They was calling me ass tone. They was calling me ass tone. That's when the jail was calling me tax tone. Break your back, bo. <laughs> oh my god, man. Hey, tax man. Love you, brother, man. Love you, bro, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Hey, I man. Appreciate, appreciate you, you man. tapping in with us, man. I just want to tell you, man. You gave us the whole game on this podcast, shit, yes, man. You did. And when, when you come home, man, Wallow got a check for you. You know, oh, Wallow both of us. No, I, no, I ain't got he nothing to, for him, man. I paid that. him back. I did his. See, just give me, just yeah. give me one of the Muslim chicks in Philly to be covered up with the wagons underneath. Hey, That's what I need. Step <laughs> off, man. Oh, oh, step off, bro. Hey, sissy, we get you off here now. Tax show. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga crazy, man. Hey, taxi, man. Hey, job, man. Hey, hey, All hey, love, bro. Hey, no. See, we, we did an exchange. When I went and did his, his podcast, I, he had owed me. So when he gave you the game, he repaid me with giving you the game. But you never did nothing for him, so you owe him. So oh, when you no when he come home, you gotta you sock it to his pocket, nigga. I oh, no, I'm gonna give him a handshake and a hug. Welcome okay. home, take and get a dinner. You know I owe him. You, you <laughs> know go get a steak dinner. Yeah, you know and old then, drop him off. No, go get him two sweaters. You know because he gonna <laughs> talk <laughs> about a ghillie bought me these two sweaters. <laughs> you, you know <laughs> now you do sweatsuits. You go get him two two yeah. two. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of this. A lot of good clothing lines out there. A lot of young brothers and sisters got clothes. Get him a little like nice clothing. No, line. Listen, I'm about to go pick out every outfit the little Dirk had on for the last week. Oh shit! You <laughs> damn, oh, that's yeah, a lot of money. Got you, fuck, you I got you though, nigga. I got you. I bless you, man. I ain't gonna stress you. That's eighty thousand dollars worth of clothes, man. Niggas wear eighty thousand dollars worth of clothes a week. Yeah, I'm talking about this, we went to interview Dirk. He walked in with all Mary shit on when we went to do the interview. He said, "Hold on, I got to change." I said, "What the fuck? You, yeah, you nigga, already got eleven thousand on. What you changing?" That nigga was a That nigga was a plan. He changed. It to some more berry Jesus. Nah, I'm, I'm proud of that kid. That yeah. yeah, but me, that's my that young. Ass, but I really yeah. appreciate y'all dirty Philly niggas, man. Real yeah. life. Man. Real talk. Doing no, thing, nigga, man. I'm clean now. Wallow's still dirty. Running right here wearing the same sweatpants every day as knee prints in them and all that shit. He's got knee prints. Oh, that nigga swear he me. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. I wear the same shit, man. I ain't got time. We got love for you, dirty New York niggas. Man. I was home. Right? I ain't changing my clothes for months yo, at a yo, time. Yo, who, who, what's the dirtiest part of New York? I bet you I could tell you. I bet you I Shut could tell you. Shut the fuck up. He talking, man. No, I, you ain't living in New York. How you going to tell me? Because I know it's the dirtiest part of New York. I want to. Damn, I told you. He I told you. He always said that. The I Bronx is the dirtiest part of New York. I don't understand yeah, that. Yeah, the Bronx is um, the Bronx is a jungle, man. That shit is a dangerous place. Yes, it is. Damn, the Bronx like that. I thought the, it was Brooklyn. No, the Bronx. No, nah, Bro- Brooklyn is the clean nah, niggas. Fly niggas. They, they think they fly. The Bronx just know they dirty. I they know Harlem they grimy. Was fly, and Brooklyn was a uh, Brooklyn uh, keep. Nah, uh, Harlem used to Brooklyn be fly. Keep, back hold, in the hold. Game. Let me go back. Brooklyn keep. Harlem keep on making it. Brooklyn keep on taking Brooklyn it. Keep taking it. Yeah. You see? But but listen. Well, it's but really listen. Manhattan, but listen. Harlem ain't make shit years. But listen, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem and Brooklyn is a different kind of fly. ASAP Rocky and them from Harlem. ASAP, J- yeah. Jimmy, uh, Dane. ASAP the, only nigga, ASAP the only nigga from Harlem being himself. Hey, Harlem is a loud fly. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, see me, we nigga. We them niggas. Yeah, we fly. You know what I mean? We see me, nigga. 
Yeah, I got. Yo, what's the joint I, I used to go play basketball? Ain't, ain't that a color mm-hmm. fuchsia? Jimmy be himself too, because Jimmy's yeah. still wearing the same shit from 06. <laughs> Don't do that to Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. But Jimmy still got no. the skulls on his shit. That's why I respect this shit, though. But Jimmy ain't changing up. I said, you gotta that Jimmy. Got hey, Jimmy. Don't do that to Jimmy, man. Jimmy out here in shit. Jimmy out here. Jimmy out here. His curl game on his bean. Thing. His push up game on the bean. I fuck with Jim. I respect Jim shit. Jim my son. Jimmy, but but what I respect about Jim is that he still ain't taking chains off his jeans. <laughs> I said that nigga sticking to his shit. Hey Jim, just sticking crazy, Jim. That's why Jim Jim will be like, I love that nigga tax. That nigga crazy. Man, niggas know me, nigga. I cut everybody ass. I don't give a fuck who a nigga think they is, nigga. You think That's you guys really King Kong? You coming over here to get joked on, and we gonna have a fight? That's my yeah, nigga. man, this nigga crazy. Sir. Shout out to Jimmy, man. That's my Jimmy, guy. Bro. Jimmy, yeah. listen. Jimmy, all the people out there who be in class clowns, man, make sure you can fight, man, because I was a class clown since the age of first grade, and I ain't stopped no, you yet. Can, listen, you keep talking. Listen, you, you keep talking about your motherfucking your, your box game, and you your motherfucking motherfucker put you down a couple times, though, man. You keep talking about this magnificent listen, box game, like listen, you was gonna go amateur box, some shit. Boxes always get put down. Listen, I'm not saying I can't get beat, but the thing is, this: if you don't beat my spirit, did you beat me? See, yeah, when you yeah, beat somebody nah, yeah, up, no, 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 that's how I feel. No, Lou ain't tax, beat my spirit. Tax, tax, tax. Don't tell him. Don't put that out there, man. Lou ain't beat my spirit. Really? Don't put that out there, if man. You beat, if you beat a nigga up, you telling him you better not do this again, right? Yeah. So then, the moment that he don't do that shit again, the moment he do it again, that means he didn't respect your beating. Yeah, but yeah, no, 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 so it, no, no. my ass while I'm on the floor bleeding. I'm gonna be like, suck my dick, kiss my ass. I don't care. You gotta beat me up again. Tax. It's sleeves that try to motherfucking escape. They got their ass whipped, tortured, and everything. And then they tried to escape again, man. They, they, <laughs> fuck, shut up. They respect that beat. What are you talking about? <laughs> so they did. If they did, they wouldn't try to. <laughs> yes, they again. did. But, That's what I'm trying but, to say. You. No, you no. Me. Bro, what, I'm going, what I'm going through right now is, is worse than a beating. That don't mean I don't respect the beating, nigga. If if I punch your ass right now into a coma and you wake up, you ain't even feel it. I knocked you out on the first punch and then punch you. <laughs> listen, listen, yeah. listen. I knock you out on the first punch, mm-hmm. right? Bam! You go right to sleep while you're laying there. I kick you in your face. I kick field goals with your face. All that you still sleep. When you wake up, your fucking head is big as a fucking lion's. You still got your spirit. That you didn't even feel that shit. You went out on the first punch, right, but your yo, head bigger than yo, a lion. Right. You still had your spirit. You said he tried to hit me with some but, deep right, shit. Right. I still got my spirit. Right. Shit, he well, beat hey, me. Hey, some jail shit. One thing he on some jail shit. Hey, what, yeah, what, you what know, a lion. He, I'd rather be. You know, he on the jail shit. I, I'd rather be a lion for. Right. You I see rather, extraordinary things outside. Right. Oh, he just shot his knee one time and he give the streets up. But no, this is the whole thing. Tax, you no, want he some, was smart. You want some jail, you want some jail rhyme and shit. You know how niggas in jail be. I'd rather be a, a lion for an hour than a lamb for forever. All this dumb shit. <laughs> he got all the sense. Yeah, my spirit ain't get beat up. So you know all the rhymes and shit in jail. Bro, your the metaphors. spirit ain't get beat up, but your nah. fucking bones. Your body got beat the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's the thing. Your bones heal. All that shit heal, bro. No, the, but but you had to spend you had to spend eleven hundred on ice to get the swelling on your head the normal. Yeah. Your shit was the size of a fucking fully grown lion. You had to put. Prof- that's the thing. That's the past. So the thing is this: if you don't put me in a wheelchair, what you did? No, if you don't do nothing permanent. <laughs> you don't do nothing. He wants somebody uh, taking this no, close no, no, to no, death. No, no. All right, I'm almost no dead. Permit. I respect. All right, you. hold on. First of all, tax. Let's be for real. We all mm-hmm. know. We all know. When you wake up and your motherfucking head, the size of a lion, is all swolled up, and you gotta look at yourself for three weeks like that, you never know if your shit gonna go back to normal. You be scared to death. <laughs> Nigga crazy. Am I going to be Mufasa for the rest of my life? And then when your, <laughs> and your spirit come back as your fucking swelling go down and your face come back. And then when your shit look the normal, did you, did you, yeah, nigga ain't did nothing. Yeah, he swelled me up a little bit. It was cool though, nigga. I'm going to get back, nigga. Oh, but cool yeah, shit. let your fucking head be, let you be the Mufasa for the rest of your life, man. You know, and it's hard to get your spirit it's back. Man. Yeah, it's just, it's just deep though, man. It's a that's, just, that's just my ideology and things, it's man. If you if you don't kill me, you ain't beat me. Yeah, but listen, no, that's not my question. ideology of things. L- L- listen, the word. Listen, I'm gonna just put this out there because I ain't want to tell you on like online like this. But the word in you know the word in New York, the word that was running around in offices in New York that you was a chef up north, like you up there, like what's man, going I was on? a chef, yeah, man. Listen, I know how to cook, but I swear to God, I ain't cooked not one day since I've been in jail. 
Oh, wow. oh you got somebody cooking with you? Cooking for you? Man, a whole bunch of Puerto Ricans cook for me. <laughs> Yo, whoa. whoa. Like, were you paying them? Why, like, like, why are they Puerto Ricans? Yeah, like, like did you pay them? Did you pay them? Hey, like, what type, of, what type of agreement y'all got? What type of agreement y'all got? Right. Man, I just tell them niggas, listen, you need this? Here, take that. Clean the fuck up. Stay out my way. <laughs> That sound like your celly, man. Yeah, <laughs> celly. He hyping shit up. Uh, he got a celly, a third, a celly that ain't got nothing that's cooking. He uh, trying to make it like he uh, running the joint. Like his island, this single cell here. Oh he, damn. He act, he acting like he running the joint. Yeah, I just tell him cook, clean. Nah, up. I don't want no jails. I be back. I ain't trying to run no jails. That's Better one not. thing about me. You trying to run out yeah. of the jail? Yeah, I just want to run my crib. I don't care right, about that. No, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you one thing. So two things. Certain. Wallow ran every motherfucking jail he was in. He ran from mm. niggas all through that motherfucker. They <laughs> chased them all through the yard everywhere. You hear me? I just ran away from danger. <laughs> yeah. You hear me? I ran away from danger. I don't be looking for no problems in jail. Man. No, I'm you ain't supposed to, to be, man. You're a grown ass man. You're trying to get home to your wife, man. Soon as Wallow, so you soon as Wallow ch- knocked me out, that nigga's getting arrested. Because well, I can't wait to call the cops on the first nigga ever in my life. Oh, so you come home? Oh my god! Oh, you come oh home? My god. Listen, tax. You come home and you gonna be coming home and tell on niggas, tax like in real life. I can't wait to come home and tell on niggas. They've been sending me to jail for twenty years. Oh my I'm god! I'm coming home and telling the first nigga I see Jay Walker. He telling me. He, 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 he sound like Char- he sound like Charlamagne. That's Charlamagne. I'm just gonna call the cops. I ain't gonna get it. Yo, bro, I want to call the cops on the nigga bad. I just want to feel how I feel. <laughs> what? I can't wait. Soon as I see a nigga doing something, I'm like, yeah, y'all niggas got weed out here? I'm calling the cops. Yo, cops, these niggas got weed right here. Yo, why you ain't never do stand up, man? Why you ain't never you do stand up? I wasn't doing stand up, but I was doing sit down. I was just sitting in a chair being funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. I ain't tell you about the time, man. Like, like, like listen, it, it's some shit going on right now. What happened is, Gil told on these five niggas in 1999. The they here, they just came home. So they've been on it. <laughs> They be, the one nigga, the one nigga texted me and said, "Yo, man, Wallow, man, stay, stay away from Gil. I'm gonna wet that nigga beak when I see him." I said, "What?" I said, "What the fuck did that mean?" I said, "Listen, I text dude back. I said, listen, I did him a video. I'm like, listen, bro, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's y'all business. I'm gonna stay away from that, man. Handle, do what you got to do. I mean, but Gil got on the stand. That nigga made a mixtape on the stand in '99. I didn't know about it. It Just came out. It was called. Uh, it was. It was called. I hate you, niggas. Volume one. He got on the stand and, and barbecued them niggas, man. They said the mic was on fire. They said that shit was on fire. The sonographer was like. Do they do they really call Philadelphia Philadelphia? Oh uh, man, I'm not gonna agree with that. Every motherfuckers tell everywhere, man. Oh niggas definitely do everywhere. Niggas tell, niggas tell know, everywhere Mont, though. Mont, a Philly nigga hit me up when I was in the feds. That nigga say, yo, any Philly niggas in there with you? I said, yeah, it's one nigga named Philly. He said, man, that nigga probably rat, man. <laughs> <laughs> He said, man, you know they call this shit Philadelphia. I said, oh, oh, bro, I know bro. that shit. Bro, let, let's be serious. Motherfuckers, listen. Uh, you know, when you're looking at this whole street shit that everybody idolized, every block got rats on it. Right. Every corner got suckers right. on it. Every corner's got fake tough guys. All this shit is the same, bro. It's just a different name. You know that, Tax. It's just a different name, bro. Indeed. Indeed so. I mean, niggas Indeed going so. Niggas going to ice a nigga if they, you know, everything is situation. Gotta, you know, there's some niggas in Boston call that shit Ratchet Chooses. I mean, so, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, on. it is facts that Gil did tell on Tootie when he got locked up for that the week. Fuck out of here, you know he that did tell because he got out before. How you get out fourteen days before first your motherfucking all, pussy, woman? First of all, pussy, you, you you told on me. I just got away. They ain't no fucking evidence. Well, if you ain't got no paperwork, I really didn't tell. So if I told it, if I made an agreement with the cops and they ain't write it down, that's not that's not telling well, tax. Well, I didn't well, tell well, on him. Niggas. He's a shit, Tax, man. He told when we was running off the scene, he was like, wait up, cuz. Gil, hold up. All that shit he tagged you know, me he, on the ground. He hit him with a wave. He hit him with, come on, come from under that red car, that Buick. That Buick was saved. Come from under there, cuz. They got us. He hit, he hit him with that. <laughs> niggas fucking, niggas, niggas, niggas are vicious kids out. But you and him could roll together because y'all, because y'all, I can see both of y'all, man, riding around in the car just, just dropping dimes so niggas. Y'all got all the hotlines from New York, Jersey, Philly, all the yeah. way to Baltimore. Y'all, you, him, you and Gil gonna be the, hot, the, the hotline here, boys. You ass, nigga. Y'all gonna be riding around lighting the hotlines the fuck up. The fuck is she Tell them about? niggas, yeah, the boys right there in the red coat. He got a package. Hey, He's on the corner. I told niggas the other day. The CO pulled up on me the other day. He said, "Yo, man, I see some shit on the internet. They talking about you telling on your case." I said, "Man, listen." 
All I can tell you is this, man. If I'm telling, they need to let me the fuck out because everybody else is home. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I don't know what the fuck. Why I got to go to trial if I'm telling? <laughs> you know you know what's so sad with squids? They don't even understand that people that went to, that's going to trial ain't cut no deal with the government because you ain't got to go to trial if you cut a deal with the government. Yeah. There's no reason. Right. You already know your deal is done. You know you getting out. Right. I'm going to trial. I got to get judged by 12. So it's like, you know, the fight that I'm going through is serious. So that's why when I see certain people like playing with it and like playing with my case, period, like, I don't like that shit. Like, especially them bloggers. You know, we all going to meet one day and have a discussion about this shit. But it's like, bro, you don't play with people's lives like that. I'm facing a serious charge. You understand? I had somebody going on for years talking about how I came to kill him for his brother to finally admit that they knew that I was there and came to get me. That dude was not on that flyer. That dude been on a million flyers through Brooklyn. So you tell me tax going to come to Manhattan to try to shoot somebody? That shit don't even make no sense. So it's like, that's why I get mad at certain people that's in the media that allow niggas to, to paint these narratives like, oh, yeah, and tax is telling on me. So why the fuck is you out of jail then? Why are you not in jail? Because, see, tax ain't get caught with shit. Tax is not on camera shooting. Tax ain't get caught with no fucking guns. You did. So why is you talking about I told on you? Yeah, no. that, now now it makes, now it makes sense because Gil was out fourteen days before his wife, so I know he told. Fuck you, you know that told, nigga. Yeah. Tax man, we love you, man. Appreciate you, you, bro. you tapping in, brother. I love y'all, bro. Yeah, love you, bro. Man, and it's just like that, right?